Welcome to the J June 3rd Selectman's Meeting. Please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to thank the board again for allowing us to appear before you tonight. Uh, tonight we have a double ceremony. We have the promotion of Alex Reno to the rank of lieutenant and the appointment of Kevin Smith as a full-time police officer for the uh, town of Hampton. Yes. So at this time I'd ask um, Sergeant Alex Reno to come up and be very prepared to take the oath of office and if our town clerk would step forward. To the town of Hampton and the county of Rockingham, to Alex J. Reno of Northampton, New Hampshire, and the county of Rockingham. Whereas there is a vacancy in the office of police and lieutenant in said town, and whereas we, the subscribers, have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you, the said Alex J. Reno, as police lieutenant of said town. And upon your taking the oath of office, and having this appointment and the certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers, perform the duties, and be subject to the liabilities of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead. Given under my hand and seal, this third day of June, 2019, Fred Welch, town manager. Now if you can raise your right hand, repeat after me. I, Alex J. Reno. I, Alex J. Reno. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the United States of America. To the United States of America. And the state of New Hampshire. And the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Alex J. Reno. I, Alex J. Reno. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties encumbered on me. All of the duties encumbered on me. As a police lieutenant. As a police lieutenant. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Moment, I'd like to have members of Alex's family come up to pin on the badge and the bars on his collar. That's the trickiest part of the whole ceremony. <laughs> I'd uh, like to thank the, uh, the manager, the assistant manager, and the board of selectmen for your, uh, for your confidence in me and for giving me this opportunity. And also uh, to the chief and the deputy, thank you very much uh, for your confidence. And my wife, who has Thank you to my wife, but to my family, my parents, um, uh, my children, uh, and uh, friends and family who came here today, and especially the men and women of the Hampton Police Department, you're true professionals, and I appreciate your support, and the fire department also. Thank you very much.
Mr. Chairman, I would like to highlight that the promotion tonight is as a result of a recent retirement. Uh, Dan Gidley retired as a lieutenant with the police department. It was effective June 1st. And we do want to congratulate Danny on an outstanding career and all his achievements. Um, and we hope Alex can live up to, to the billing. <laughs> so. Let's give Dan a round of applause. At this time, I'd like to have Officer Kevin Smith come up. From the town of Hampton in the county of Rockingham to Kevin J. Smith of Plastown, New Hampshire in the county of Rockingham. Whereas there is a vacancy of the office of full-time police officer in said town, and whereas we the subscribers have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you the said Kevin J. Smith as full-time police officer of said town. And upon your taking the oath of office, and having the appointment of this and the certificate of set oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers, perform the duties, and be subject to the liabilities of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead. Given your under my hand this third day of June 2019, Fred Welsh, town manager. I can have you raise your right hand, Peter. I, Kevin J. Smith. I, Kevin J. Smith. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. That I will bear faith and true allegiance. To the United States of America. To the United States of America. In the state of New Hampshire. In the state of New Hampshire. And will support the constitutions thereof. And will support the constitutions thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, Kevin J. Smith. I, Kevin J. Smith. Do solemnly and sincerely. Do solemnly and sincerely. Swear and affirm. Swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform discharge and perform all the duties encumbered on me all the duties encumbered on me as a full-time police officer as a full-time police officer according to the best of my abilities according to the best of my abilities agreeably to the rules and regulations agreeably to the rules and regulations of this constitution of this constitution and the laws of the state of New Hampshire and the laws of the state of New Hampshire so help me God so help me God. Best is on, so drive deep. <laughs> now, a little known fact this is my favorite appointment. This is my 10th appointment as chief of police in less than five years. Wow. Pretty, staff, pretty rapid pace. Kevin is the only officer that we've appointed that was actually born before I became a police officer, so. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you. Chairman, thank you again, and we will get out of your way. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We're done.
The commission is the SRO officer. Did you see David? His wife works in the school. Yes. The wife works in the school. Oh, yeah. I know. And she has really, really good concerts. Yes. She's the number in your house. Yep. So that lady's name is Dottie. She lives upstairs from me. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She's a yapper. She's Public comment. Anyone wishing to make public comment? Charlie, please. No. And we have Jay waiting in behind you. Yeah, I, I just want to make it quick. Uh, try to resurrect something. Uh oh. The um, use of the town parking lot. I see the seafood fest is in for it. I didn't know if the chamber, the precinct, the selectmen, and the rec department could possibly consider letting people from town park down there during the children's festival. A oh. little bit of history. It goes back to when Dickie Baby was a selectman. I came in, oh. took a couple of months, we went back and forth. <laughs> the rec was worried, the department was worried they were going to lose money. They finally agreed to allow 20 spaces for the thing, for the five days, because all that stuff happens during the day and the space is available. Yeah. And Diana Mott, if anybody talks to Diana, after all the back and forth, because she came in and said, you know, Vic was worried they lose money. And they allowed to agreed to allow 20 spaces for the five days. I asked Diane when it was over how many they actually got. One. So you know maybe we could try again and see if we could do a little more than that. And, you know, and if we got the word out, if the chamber put it out, and the precinct, and the town, and the rec department put it out, because it's you know try to get some little little things like that that the townspeople can do and take their kids down there for nothing. Make the only requirement is a, that you have a, town, a registered car in the town and. That you have a kid in the car, <laughs> or and two. Uh, you know, just get everybody to work together on it. Something really simple and uh, something nice for the people of Hampton. I also want to say at the uh, quickly at this the, the memorial celebration there this past Monday at eight o'clock, I ran into uh, Vic, you know, down there, and after it was over, he said to me, "Jolly," he says, "I got to tell you that back gate's working." He goes, "I was against it." He goes, "But I see it's working." So I want to thank you for that too. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Charlie. Jay? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Jay Diener, 206 Woodland Road. I'm here for two things. Um, one is to address a topic that came up um, here at the Board of Selectmen meeting when the folks came in from the state to talk about hazard mitigation grants. Uh -huh. And it's come up at the Conservation Commission meetings and at our Coastal Hazards Adaptation Team meetings and at our flood smart workshops, and that has to do with whether or not dredging the harbor is going to have any impact on flooding in the town of Hampton. Uh, Kirsten Howard of the New Hampshire DES Coastal Program got in touch with somebody from the Ar Army Corps of Engineers who's familiar with our project, and their statement is that the maintenance dredging of Hampton Harbor is not expected to change the height of tide or reduce any flooding impacts. The purpose of the dredging is for navigation. Mm. Um, and the comments were that this is an open system. We've, we've got water coming in from that little body out there called the ocean. Uh -huh. um, and as long as we've got water coming in there, the water level is going to maintain its height. Um, there's nothing that can reduce that height as if it were a closed system like a pond or a lake. Uh, the one additional comment was that um, there might be some impact on the wave action um, if we do get a west wind in the harbor because the the dredging will 
deep in the harbor, and so there'll be less, um, less impact of the water going across the sand at the bottom of the harbor. So there's, there'll be nothing there to slow the water down. Sure. To the extent that there's any impact at all, that, that is what that impact is going to be. So dredging itself is not going to have any impact on whether or not there's flooding in Hampton Harbor or the extent to which there's flooding in Hampton Harbor. Second thing I want to talk about um, is that the um, Hampton Conservation Commission is having its town forest cleanup this coming Saturday. It's from 9 to noon. Um, we'll, everybody is going to meet at the Mill Road entrance to um, the town forest, White's Lane. Um, and we want everybody to come and work together to keep the town forest clean. Uh, we suggest that everybody dress appropriately for the outdoors, bring gloves, water, bug spray, and sunscreen. We will provide refreshments, and we're also going to have some interesting prizes and awards for people who participate. Um, so um, it should be a fun event as well as a beneficial event to keep our town forest clean for everybody who wants to hike or bike or run uh, in the town forest. Uh, for more information or to sign up, please contact Ray Ann Dione, our conservation coordinator. Uh, you can reach her tomorrow or Wednesday at her office, and the phone number there is 929-5808. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. And the, Thank you. And the town forest is not for shooting. No. Okay. We're, we're cleaning Wolseley. up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we oh, have you? announcements. And oh, did you want to speak? Oh, yeah, yes, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. That's okay. Gary Paul, Four Lion Street. Church Street, uh, the Friday before the holiday, was closed. I'm still waiting for my email. Uh, with, uh, it must have been a glitch or something. Because I keep getting Ann's Lane's closing. I don't get my Church Street closings. I think this was a terrible, terrible idea. I shut that street down this Friday before the holidays, too, by the way. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, next, we have announcements in community calendar. I'm up here under public comment. Uh -huh. Mary Louise Woolsey, 148 Little River Road. We've reached a point where we need to sit down and discuss the fallout from the failure of past boards to comply with the Town of Hampton personnel policy. The assistant manager position created in 2014 was a flagrant violation of that policy. That position created by the Board of Selectmen Friends of form, former Chief Sullivan has resulted in the illegal expenditure of over $360,000 for a 32-hour work week new position. And effective November 1, 2017, the scheme to have Assistant Manager Sullivan assume the manager's seat on July 1, 2020, 2020 is set out in detail. This position must be eliminated now. As a 55-year taxpayer, I demand a public accounting for this reckless decision. In, addi in addition to squandering public funds, this activity has impaired Mr. Welch's ability to manage and enforce town policies, which has caused him great stress and emotional harm as a loyal 12-year employee. The elected officials who deliberately created this illegal position should be removed from office. The three illegal uh, contracts L executed in November 2017, which addressed the manager's office from 11-117 to 6-30-22, must be declared null and void, with a new legal exclusive contract for Mr. Welch immediately. This can't go on, ladies and gentlemen, and the all, all around town people are very upset. Anyone else wishing to speak? Moving on to announcements and community calendar. No, nothing, Mrs. Wolseley? Well, we should recognize the memo that we got for the two individuals retiring from public works uh, at Marie Hall uh, 30, uh, 30 years, and I forget the other uh, uh, individual, but I hope that uh, Marie and her husband and her dogs have a great retirement, and we're grateful for her service. Robert Walker is, I believe, is the other ah, yes. good drainage inspector is retiring at the end of June. And also I have a couple <coughs> things. Um, we got a memo from town manager saying that the grand opening of the trade school is going to be Wednesday, June 26, 109, yeah. Toll Farm Road. Yeah. 
And we also have tomorrow night is the Well 22 public hearing here in the town hall at 7 o'clock. So if anyone is interested, Aquarian is looking to implement their new Well 22. So if they have any questions or concerns, they should stop by tomorrow night. And also I have, oh, I went on a couple weeks ago, I think it is now. I went to go visit the ladies with the Meals on Wheels and I went out with them. And I gotta tell you, there's a lot of people in Hampton that those guys help out and it's all different types of people. All you have to do is be 60. A lot of uh, people my age who are concerned that their parents aren't getting a meal a day, they have it brought over and there's a lot, you'd be surprised at some of the meals that these people go, the meals that some of these people get really good and uh, it was a good, a good day and also I want to say as far as uh, Mary Louise's public comment, she's correct. There's a lot of talk about this, so I don't think that... Okay, that's not announcements in community calendar. Do you want to speak? That's old business. Well, I don't think we can this, ignore We're it. making announcements in community calendar. Do you have anything <laughs> else? That's it. Oh, that's Mr. Waddell. That. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to congratulate Winnicott at Spring Sports. Um, mm -hmm. They've had a really successful spring. Uh, the baseball team made the playoffs first time since 2011. I believe the girls' softball team is still in the playoffs. The boys' lacrosse team is still in the playoffs. And the girls' lacrosse team is playing for the state championship division two tomorrow night in Manchester. So congratulations to all the Winnicunit staff over there and the uh, athletes. The uh, Hampton Fire Department had their uh, Fireman's Memorial Sunday this past Saturday. Yeah. And uh, I mean Sunday, excuse me. Uh, although it was sprinkling, they chose to do it outside the station, and uh, but it was a very nice event for a chance for the firefighters from the three towns of Hampton, Hampton Falls, and Northampton to rec remember those who have come before them. So, yeah, and I um, am sorry that I had to be out of town with so many uh, memorials and things going on because it sounds like it really went well. I saw a lot of the pictures and that, and it's always memorable particularly the, um, the parade or the one down at the beach. I always love it, and I regret that I missed it, but it sounds like everything was well attended. Next, we have, and I thank um, is Dirk Benedict. Is he, is he hmm? the one still Burke doing it? Dennett, um, yeah. Yeah, Burke Dennett. Yeah, Burke Dennett. Yeah, Bennett. Yeah. Well, he always does a great job, and he works very hard on it. Um, Next, we have approval of minutes, May 20th, 2018, public and non-public sessions. I will so move. A second. second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next, we have the consent agenda. I that will so move. Number one yep. is 220 fire warrant reappointments, donations, entertainment license, uh, uh, letters of no objection for outside service of alcohol, letters of no, ob oh, that's this, uh, parade and public gathering license, uh, one day entertainment license for the James House and the Sand Dollar Village, raffle permit for the library, use of, of town property at, for a wedding and the seafood festival. Mr. Chairman. And we, we had, have a new one, yeah. We had a late, late arrival today, <clears throat> excuse me, from the Hampton Arts Network requesting a raffle permit for 612-19. And that's the number 10. Yes, Also sir. move it. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Abstain. Oh, one abstention. I'd just like to say that looking at this on the donations uh, for the $1,200 from Experience Hampton, yes. if you've noticed the, uh, the boxwood plants around the gazebo, have uh, all got a disease this winter and they were all destroyed. And that was brought to the attention of the uh, recreation director. Yeah. And uh, he made some contacts with Experience Hampton and they are, are going to nice. replace those for that. So we want to thank them very much. Thank you. Some of mine died too, it was a bad winter. Next, we have appointments. Um, number one, we have Chris Jacobs. You have, how about Ellen? Ellen comes Ellen, first. Uh, Ellen Levin. Yeah. Mrs. Lavin. Okay, I didn't see her. I was on the, I new, agen was on on. the new agenda. <laughs> okay, I, d I have my old agenda. Come change. on up here, Ellen. We'll start with you. <coughs> yes, you are. You're hard to miss in the audience. I don't know. There we go. New agenda. Hi, 
Um, as you remember, I was here about two months ago to get authorization to borrow a $4 million uh, tax anticipation note. Yep. And tonight I am here to actually have you sign the note. Mm -hmm. uh, two certificates and two line of credit riders, the usual paperwork that we sign. Uh, actually, it will not be effective until June 6, okay. which is three days from now. So if I could just get all your signatures. That's good. Tomorrow what I do is I have the uh, town clerk, she seals them and signs them, and then we send them off to the bank. Okay. So do you want us to sign them tonight before you leave? If you could. Yeah, yeah. good. Do you want Just a motion uh, to accept? We already voted on it, didn't we? You did. Well, we're going yeah, to we we're going to be signing. Well, so you sign, sign her documents. Go ahead and sign it. Yeah. Yes. She's but you, you can give them. You've already given the approval. You previously oh, moved okay. to approve. Oh my goodness, my dear. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> There's two of those and one note. Thank you, Thank you for the little tab. No. That helps. <laughs> God, you get enough. Sir. Get enough papers So there is a possibility that you won't have to? Christy doesn't seem to think that we will uh, through June, but we might run a little tight in uh, November, November, December. So good to be prepared. Well, if I borrow now, then it will be a decision. If, if, I, if I pay it back, then I can't borrow again. I can only borrow four. Yeah. So I would prefer not to borrow now and wait until the fall because of all the construction that we're doing, seeing that they're SRF, we have to spend the money before we can get reimbursed. Correct. Yeah. So We've that's always why things are a little close. Well, we're depending on you as always. It seems to work out pretty good. So. But Ellen. Christy and I work, uh, work together, so it's, it works out well. Okay. We'll get we need that one. We'll swap. We need that one. Okay, I'm try that one. Oh, that's a paper. Mm -hmm. Okay, we do that. Right, and you got one more coming. Here you go. We got more coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so there's more. Are we just so put the, yeah. Oh, there you go. Her stuff. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Good. Good brief. Thank you. Thank you for what you do, Thank Ellen. You, Ellen. Thank you. Okay, next we have Chris Jacobs and Jen Hale. I come down earlier and put um, my report uh, on the desk mm -hmm. in front of everyone. So, they can be fun. and I have four extra. So I'll put them in the and good evening. How is everyone? Good. Good. How are you? Good. Um, I'll get right into the report. This will mm -hmm. time is money, right? Uh, you should all well. 
it was mentioned earlier that uh, yes, we have two people retiring. Uh, Marie Hall, uh, she's, Marie's been with us 30 years. Uh, she's currently the operations coordinator. She took over several years ago for uh, Teresa. Uh, has done a fine job, but um, for a number of reasons, uh, 30 years is it. And um, <laughs> as she said, I still have my health. I'd like to enjoy some some time, some, do some camping. Um, and uh, I can wholeheartedly support that. It was the uh, dogs who wanted her to retire. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Bobby, they want to go camping. Uh, Bobby Walker is also going to retire. Bob's been with us uh, right out of high school, 42 years. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Worked his way up from his labor from the bottom all the way to the um, sewer and drainage inspector. Um, I literally mean he has, and I wrote down here, he's literally been part of every excavation and repair on every street here in Hampton. Um, I'm always amazed in talking with him. You know, they can say, oh, yeah, well, no, we went up to the right side of that house, and uh, it's copper about halfway up. So the, the, the things that uh, institutional knowledge that he knows is just is going to be amazing. Uh, we are having a cookout uh, next Tuesday, and if anyone would like to come down and shake their hands and have a burger with us, please uh, feel free to. It's open door. Uh, I've extended the invitation out through uh, a number of the department heads, and hopefully they can they can tell their their staff. Uh, we do have two new hires. Brad Bailey started with us on April 15th. Brad is a Hampton resident. Um, we were lucky to uh, to find him uh, actually. Uh, the guys met him out on a construction site, and um, he ha already has his CDL license. Uh, oh, good, commercial good. Commercial driver's license, and he has many, many years, well, several years of, uh, of um, road and pipe construction, so um, he comes to us uh, highly trained, and we're very lucky to have him. Joss Timon started with us on May 8th. He's a resident of Stratum. Uh, he came as, in as a referral from Frank Swift. So if you got Swifty's uh, referral, well, that just kind of says a lot. Um, apparently, he lives in the same neighborhood as Frank. Uh, we did go through the interview process with, with Josh, and a fine young man, and uh, we looked to many, forward to many years with him. I'd like to say thank you to, the, uh, to you, the Board of Selectmen, for allowing us to uh, put our little wooden truck upstairs in the lobby. Uh, it was a big success. Uh, we collected a, a 25 pound or 25 bags of food, uh, which we will be donating to a, donating to a local food pantry for di for distribution. Uh, it was part of um, nationally. There's a National Public Works Week, yeah. and that's one of the things that they try to do. Uh, we kind of missed it last year, uh, but we uh, through a lot of planning, we were more uh, we were definitely ready to uh, go with it this year. Um, we built the, during the winter we were able to build the uh, truck in-house, uh, built it so that it can be used as a little bit of a photo opportunity and if anyone hasn't seen it, um, the lights even work. You can hit a switch on the dash and headlights come on and a little light on top flashes so it's hopefully a big hit with the kids. Um, Jennifer's going to run over our major projects. And when I say run over them, I'll go over them fairly quickly, but obviously if there's any questions at the end, let me know. Uh, this past weekend, we had Household Hazardous Waste Day. Uh, this was the first event of this year. We will be having a second one. Uh, there were 252 participants, uh, right in line with what we've had in the past. Uh, everything seemed to go quite smoothly with uh, the same caveats of long lines and uh, just waiting your turn to get into uh, drop off the stuff, but uh, we were grateful to have it done and we look forward to the next scheduled event Which is August 24th uh, Lafayette Road drainage and sidewalk replacement. This was a project we were hoping to get started this spring We have made the decision that we are going to wait till after seafood festival uh, Part of the reasoning behind that is that we had our public meeting in March We've taken some of those comments. We've uh, incorporated them uh, looked at the design, looked at doing the cross sections that we needed to get done. And basically right now we're just waiting for the final plans to come in, which should be any day now. Um, the plans will go out to bid uh, once they are posted at Town Hall and on the website, uh, making sure that we've addressed uh, the comments that we are able to address. Mill Pond Dam. Uh, we've been here before in the last few weeks or so talking about needing to get uh, the construction underway after our little bump in the road with the previous contractor. I'm happy to report that the contract was awarded to get the work done. 
they started this morning and they finished probably three quarters of it. Hmm. So we are well on our way to meeting our contractual deadlines uh, as well as having that done within budget. Uh, as many know, Anne's Lane sewer uh, replacement project the road has been paved uh, right now yes the yellow stickies are there we're gonna have it striped at the same time we do our long line striping uh, that's coming up in a few weeks uh, that striping along with some new signage that's going up is the last part to wrap up that project and uh, we definitely would like to thank this board for giving us that opportunity to fit that project uh, within the warrant article for the paving that was passed last year as well as some uh, miscellaneous budget money that we were unable to spend in uh, other sewer planned projects because we didn't have enough to do those. So we thank you for that. Uh, asset management software. I put this in here as a current project because I think it's important to remind everybody <coughs> that we are currently using it uh, and that we benefit from the program. Basically our sewer and drain wastewater treatment plant and highway departments use the software along with all of us uh, in the main office. Since January, there's been 150 service requests, 191 work orders, wow. and these were the ones entered from all departments for calls that come in. Um, this, of course, is beyond our daily work. Uh, these are calls such as potholes. These are calls about signs being down. Uh, we do appreciate the calls, uh, so yeah. we want everybody to know that, that this is how we find out about things that we don't necessarily have our eyeballs on. Uh, the residents and the business owners are people that help us uh, find the things that we haven't seen. So uh, the system is working very well for us. Uh, since we originally installed it, we now do our driveway permits, sewer connections, sewer disconnect permits, and our excavation permits are all tracked in the system. Wow. So everything is tracked by address, everything is tracked by the actual assets in the ground uh, that are being worked on. So we have a historical uh, representation of all the work that's getting done in town. Uh, we want everybody to know that we continue to gain the efficiency, that we'll be looking for another grant from DES uh, to add, add on to the uh, asset management program, looking to add on our vertical assets, which would be our pump stations and those uh, components that are interior, uh, that we use this to organize the information. The intent is to use it for all our CIP planning. Uh, and obviously, and we hope the public understands it so that we can provide that highest level of service um, as things need to get done around mm -hmm. town. The Gristville renovation, uh, while we were waiting for Mill Pond Dam to get back working, uh, the grist mill has gotten a facelift. If anybody hasn't seen it, it's got new shingles and a new roof on it. Uh, this was completed within the last week or so. Um, it was a little bit beyond the scope of what was approved uh, in the Warren article due to the cost increases between the two, but we were able to cover the rest of it out of our maintenance um, building budget uh, to get it done. So uh, that work is also complete. Um, I think probably my favorite the window, one. The windows aren't done. Oh, the windows are not done. They're, Sorry. they're being, each one's its own special fabrication. So uh, the yeah. windows are being fabricated and they'll be put in, hopefully within a week. And that was part of the, we tried to save the windows with, that were there, but when they ended up taking off the, yeah. the framing around the windows or the trim work, the windows literally fell apart. So yeah. I authorized them to do the complete job. Thanks. Uh, that pause was a good point because this project is my favorite one uh, oh. that's on here. Uh, the new force mains are operational. They were connected last Friday. They've all been tested. They are working. Uh, as of tomorrow, we'll be working to flush the temporary force main that lays mm -hmm. around the side of the road. Once that line is flushed, Sunbelt will come back in, uh, cut up the pipe, and remove it. And all that will remain is the areas of cleanup um, along the easement area, along 101. Uh, anything gets disturbed as we take out uh, the temporary main. Uh, we are very excited about this project. This is something that a lot of people, including this board and many others, uh, were strong participants of. Uh, it took a lot of hard work from our engineers, the contractors, those running around, uh, police details, uh, you name it, everybody was uh, working to get this done. Uh, so we are thankful that it is and uh, happy that everybody made this happen. So with that, I'll move on to some of the newer ones. The Park Avenue culvert replacement is underway as well. Uh, the design is being done by 
uh, tie and bond. They're working on both culverts at the same time as we've discussed. We've already met with DES regarding the permits. Uh, we are waiting to file our letters of notification in which they will allow us to do the work. Uh, the plans are expected to be put out to bid in the next week or so and hopefully construction starting that first week and a half uh, in July. Uh, we have coordinated with Parks and Rec. Uh, I don't know if anybody saw it, but they put out a nice PSA little piece uh, talking about why uh, Kids Kingdom is going to be closed until the end of this construction. Uh, it is a safety concern. Uh, to have the park open as well as the entrance into King's Kingdom that is very narrow and one of the culverts we're replacing. Uh, it was decided that it would be best to not risk damage to their new equipment, not risk any safety concerns, but wait to re-put the playground back together until this work is done. Uh, we hope to have it done by the end of August. So that will come back online. Um, we'll continue to work with Parks and Recs. We have a plan in place to widen the entrance in to Tuck Field so that it be uh, an in and an out, uh, especially when we're working on the King's Kingdom side uh, where that access is very close to the uh, culvert area that crosses the street. The wastewater treatment plant facilities upgrade project. Uh, as many of you know, we talked about how Wright Pierce submitted their our preliminary design report, the board authorized their contract for final design. Uh, so they are working on that now, outlining the specific items and design approaches for each of the components that were part of the Warren article. Uh, their contract to start the final design was signed, I believe, at the end of last month, and the project will be ready to bid in October. Uh, so that is coming up. Uh, will probably come up sooner than we think. <coughs> The Meadow Pond Hampton Harbor studies, uh, the two Warren articles that were on uh, to look at Meadow Pond's drainage along with Green and Gentian, King's Highway, Hampton Harbor, the Hobson Manchester, what we call the roads west of Ashworth. We are full blown into getting the monitoring done. So basically the data that's needed uh, to do the inputs for uh, the engineers. Uh, we've been working with a team of consultants on this project. This thoroughly has expanded um, to the benefit of everybody who's involved. Uh, we have two engineering firms, a survey firm, DES, and the University of New Hampshire, uh, all on board contributing uh, to making sure we get the right information and get some recommendations to help with alleviate the flooding. Um, the first step of this is installing a bunch of uh, monitoring devices. These monitoring devices are, um, they have been purchased uh, as part of this project. They will collect all the water levels at key points. It also talks about salinity, so when you're talking about salt marsh areas and areas being restored and what we'll need in the future, all that data will also uh, be used to um, make those decisions. It addresses heavy rains, it addresses tidal storms, uh, it will also basically be the basis of the hydraulic model. Uh, I tell you all that about the sensors because after this um, quarterly report, I have some more information on the sensors. Um, also, the board uh, approved us to submit to the National Wildlife Fish and Wildlife Foundation. That application has been submitted. Uh, we should hear by the end of July uh, if it has been accepted. Uh, we are very much looking forward to continuing that cycle uh, to get matching grant, grant money because if we can contribute on our end and then get the matching funds, it's going to get us into construction that much faster. Uh, so we'll look again for the warrants in 2020 uh, to get something in for construction so that we can do our next phase of a grant application for construction as well. Uh, just things to look forward to. And with that, that's sort of the project work, and uh, Chris will go into the daily operations. Um, Unless you want to do questions after yeah. all No, that. we'll <laughs> wait till we hear everything before we do okay. questions. Okay. okay. I, I know we're throwing a lot at you, cause, mm -hmm. but it's how busy we are. Um, we're continuing to make uh, temporary repairs for all the uh, potholes, uh, the uh, major defects that people call in. Again, um, the asset management system is the major proponent for tracking that and getting those things done. Um, we also have a holdover from last year. We're actually got, we'll be doing crack sealing. 
uh, weather permitting, it should be done no later than June 15th this year. Um, we're looking to pave those roads that in the past we paved, or uh, crack seal those roads that we've paved in the past so it continues to uh, maintain what uh, the voters have paid for. Uh, those roads would be Exeter Road, Toll Farm Road, Acorn Road. Uh, in addition, we're going to complete uh, crack sealing on Winnicunnet Road from Wentworth Ave east down mm -hmm. to the Ocean Boulevard. Um, there are some roads on the, out there that we do understand are in tough shape, particularly <laughs> Lock Road. Um, it is our plan to put together a proposed warrant article for 2020 meeting uh, to uh, do the full depth reclamation of Lock Road. I, again, uh, any sewer lines, because it's clay sewer, we know that. Mm -hmm. um, any drainage, and then the structural part all the way up through, just like we did in downtown uh, area on Lafayette. In addition, we're going to be making repairs this year on Ancient Highway, Cranberry Lane, West Ridge, West Ridge Drive, Smith Road, Acadia, Beach Plum Way, and Park Ave. Wow. Park Ave, a yes. big part of it is the drainage. Mm -hmm. um, that list is subject to change if things <laughs> There's our come up. Come up. <laughs> You know, uh, we would like to throw that caveat in. And uh, in the, within the next two weeks, as Jennifer already said, with respect to land, Ann's Lane and other roads around town, uh, the long line painting will be done. Um, wastewater treatment plant operations. I've tried something new with this particular sheet, and that is to give you um, some of the historic numbers and uh, quickly just allow you to compare where we currently stand in comparison to last year's. Uh, total <laughs> flow into the plant is down 40 million uh, gallons uh, through April. Uh, mainly it was due last year due to the winter storms. That's what kept it up. But we are down 40 million gallons. Uh, sludge is also down by 32 tons. Uh, that's a good savings for the town. Um, but they tell me that uh, um, this month was a, a big month on the processing side. Hmm. So uh, my next quarterly report, you know, we'll take that into account. Uh, and the amount of septage that we've received, which is a revenue generation for the, for the town, uh, that's the septic tank pumping that goes on, that's down by uh, 9,000 gallons. Um, but again, um, we're seeing an uptick in activity in those areas, um, so I wouldn't be surprised that the next uh, report shows uh, those things having ticked up. Um, I also included with this report, and I haven't done it in the past, but um, uh, mine doesn't have it. You have a summation of those wastewater treatment plant operations, uh, the spreadsheet that I maintain in your packets. I also included uh, something that uh, Brian Sharp and uh, Dan Coughlin and, and Jim Hafey, our engineer, in polishing up, and that is a solid waste summation so that if you want to see the actual numbers and um, drive down what uh, is actually going on in those departments. Good news with Finest Kind Brewing. Uh, we met with them back in April 26. They are proceeding. Matter of fact, the equipment's on site. They're going to be uh, pro installing digesters, basically the yeah. beer, yeah. malt, uh, residual. Um, it's going to be digested or reduced so that it has less of an impact on our system. Yeah. Um, they, they are busy currently installing it, and by email we've agreed on uh, the week of June 17th to get up there for an operational to see how it's working. But uh, something, you know, every, there again, everybody should be proud of this. We have been working with them diligently for the last five to seven years to get this. This, this is something that should have been done right off the bat, but uh, for various reasons wasn't. Uh, but the uh, good staff there, and uh, they've been working with us. We've been working with them pretty diligently on this. Um, transfer station operations. Um, the guys are always looking for ways to, there again, uh, curb um, our operational costs or at least control them. Um, with respect to uh, recycling information, uh, stickers are in the, in the uh, process of being printed. Uh, when we receive them, we'll be placing the stickers on each of the recycling barrels so people can literally see on the lid, hey, this is what mm -hmm. I can recycle and this is what I can't. Um, it's it's that at that point that it's either do or die with respect to cost containment. Um, we are having issues with the compactors. 
uh, compactor one the other day. Um, it needs a piston replaced on it, and uh, compactor three, we're relining it. I'm not sure if anyone really is aware, but uh, the paper, the glass, cardboard, things yeah. of that nature, yeah. uh, all that heavy pushing mm -hmm. by, the, yeah. by the pistons does wear out, literally thins out the metal in the compactors. Um, we'd ask that residents and patients businesses be patient while using the transfer station um, we've gotten you know we've made some significant changes there uh, namely all the orange cones and it's it's to prevent uh, people backing into each other people cutting the line <laughs> um, it can be a very um, busy busy place um, we are looking at the uh, rate of recycling contamination and there again uh, something totally new in this particular report is I'm giving you a breakdown of uh, on refuse uh, how do we stand for what we're paying in comparison to other years As you can see we're about we're about 32 percent of uh, what our total of, compared to last year that we've thrown away and, and where we stand on those costs because you can see every year refuse alone costs us about a half a million mm -hmm. now the second uh, boxed information is uh, we're now paying for um, that contamination fee for recycling. Last year we paid $10,767. We've already paid this year $21,855. Um, so you can see that uh, if this keeps, and this is over the first three months, if this keeps on track, we will pay $100,000 in penalty fees this year for contamination. So wow. I can't stress enough if people can Go online, download our, our advisory sheets that are on there if they can uh, yep. cease throwing th away things. Uh, somebody had a good term here a couple weeks ago and they said to me, they call it wish recycling. What people are doing is they're throwing things in the recycling bin that they wish <laughs> waste management or people would recycle. Like let's say a garden hose because it's rubber yeah. and plastic. It's still not recyclable, and and when that when you put that wish item in the container, it just drives up our contamination mm -hmm. rate yeah. and thus our cost. Yeah. So a thing like a, st a string of Christmas lights, I know it's got metal in it, and it could be recycled, and the garden hoses, uh, they still need to go in the trash. Mm -hmm. uh, so please look at the list of what can and cannot, and again, uh, the items need to be loose in the recycling bin, mm -hmm. not in a bag. We can't stress that enough. Uh, the two new uh, Mack trucks are definitely online. Uh, we're using them every single day. The guys report that they are much nicer to drive and much quieter inside, more comfortable. Um, when, as with any uh, new vehicle, when they did come, we did get the warning lights, the bugs. Uh, there were a couple of weeks where we were uh, short a truck, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of days. Um, thank you for the residents, for the patients. To, we did have to extend uh, some of our recycling. And with that, I turn it back to Jennifer. Uh, to follow the heels of all the recycling and transfer station news, uh, as you know, because you appointed <coughs> them, the Solid Waste Committee uh, has its first meeting tomorrow. Uh, so we are meeting uh, to base, excuse me, not tomorrow, Wednesday. Wednesday. I yeah. apologize, Wednesday. I'm already right, ahead I, of myself. I agreed with you. I thought it was tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta finish preparing. Whatever. It's a blur. Um, but uh, we will take that first meeting uh, to outline uh, all the factual information, the cost, the dollars, our operations, our schedules, mm -hmm. uh, make sure everybody's dealing with the same information uh, so that uh, good formal recommendations can eventually be made to the board. <clears throat> and the last one we have is? Blacksmith's shop. Um, it was a Warren article a year ago to uh, yep. renovate, improve the blacksmith shop over on Barber Road. Uh, people, some people may or not, may or may not be aware it's the building out in front of the Victory Garden. Uh, what, our inspection earlier this year, we determined that some of the uh, bottom sill plates, beams, are rotted, um, and also the floor needs to be leveled. Basically, yeah. the building yeah. has settled. Uh, so we've had such good result with the uh, contractor that we used on the grist mill. He obviously knows that kind of work and what it takes to do the job right. I have a meeting with him on Thursday to go over that particular project, get a cost estimate, and then I'll be back before the board if we can agree on a mm -hmm. scope and work. 
within the budget that we have uh, to at least do some of the, the base repairs. Yeah. Um, but we did have last year a uh, real anvil from a real blacksmith shop <laughs> donated by one of the residents, uh, David C. 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 Uh, to the town. Uh, we're storing that in the Church Street pump station so it doesn't walk away. He contacted me last week and he's also come back. Apparently he has a, another location. Uh, he's brought back all the blacksmithing tools that he had and uh, we're going to be receiving wow. those. So That's when good. we do get the floor and the, the sill stabilized within the shop, uh, there's some brick work to be done, but we'll be setting it up as a what would be would have been a working blacksmith shop. Maybe uh, yeah. Historical reasons. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. So does that conclude your report? Thankfully, yes. yes. Well, I just uh, would like to say that you've brought a lot of things to a good conclusion. It sounds like, and uh, we thank you for that. Particularly the gristmill. I've heard a lot of comments on it. Um, I'm not sure if it's because of those buildings next to it that everyone's got their eyes on it, because um, the comments aren't pretty good, aren't that good on that. But everybody seems to notice the gristmill. Good. So thank you, and yeah, I, thank I you. think that it's nice that people see your the result of your work. Um, the forest main sounds like you know that it, it did come in in un, before the budgeted time. It did. We did do a one time extension, and that was strictly just because we lost some days due to rain, and then getting the bridge here. So, so there was nothing that held us up from. Um, Operationally, so you would say it was de on time, on time, and in budget in or budget. under budget. We'll under say budget? under budget. Good, that even sounds better. Okay, um, we'll say that. And uh, so, thanks for your continuing um, recycling efforts. We all know how tough that is. And um, where is the public meeting for the uh, trash? So the solid waste committee is meeting. Is it, or at is the it a public meeting? Must be. It ought to be. Yeah. Yes. It's got oh, to be. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. at the police station. At the police station. Yes. And, uh, that 6 p.m. Wednesday at On 6 Wednesday. p.m. Yep. Okay, great. Um, and it sounds like another challenge for the blacksmith shop. Usually what happens there is there's not enough money at the end of the year, but hopefully we'll be able to do something this year because it's been going on a long time. It's been the, the money's in the 20s, and I, I'm, I'm reasonably hopeful that I can at least get the sill plates done and, and maybe the floor leveled. Um, but, uh, and, you know, as with any structure, if you don't do the foundation first, it's mm, right. a waste yeah, of time. For anyone that hasn't been over there, it's, it's interesting. And it's mm. interesting there with the garden and all of that. Mm. I, I think it's a, a little yes. mini treasure. It's great. Yep, I would agree. Yeah, so thank you. Mrs. Wolseley? Um, the digesters at Finest Kind, last I recollect they had three. Is there a fourth one going in? They, their design is for four digesters, but right. they're going to be installing two at this time. But I if you thought were they to had up, already installed two. No, what you see out back right now that's the, the large tank that th is there is basically what's known as an equalization tank. In other words, they dump into it Whatever. after every batch is brewed, yeah. uh, can t keep it stirred, keep it mixed, and yeah. then it. the digesters, ha it's a steady flow. It's, uh, it's nothing that can be... Uh, um, it, there again, equalization, meter it out slowly, let the digesters do their work. So they have sufficient now to do the volume that they're doing? Correct. Because I was a little yep. concerned about that. Um, thank you and thank your crew for fixing the side of the pavement on Mill Road where it was really dug down and mm -hmm. people were tripping in it and whatever. And I went by the other day and it looks like it's very well done. Five Corners, that um, little extra paving stuff is already going to pot down there, the one by, just by the oh, little okay. school shed. Um, Anne's Lane, uh, thank you very much. I like the way you extended the paving into the adjacent roads so that it's all clean going into the intersection. I'm hoping we don't have any more flooding there but uh, at the end of people's driveways and so forth, it's, it's worked out very nicely. So that, that was a pleasure to see that. When the water mains break, and we are actually getting uh, updates from Aquarian, but when water mains break, 
Is that affecting you at all in the roads? Are you finding that you're having problems because, like there was one of 433 High Street what, this morning, and is that interfering with you at an, in any way? You know, any... Not, not in a big way. The, the, the only one that I can think of that was a major interference, and, and it goes to the, um, the maintenance and, and improve, improved uh, materials always need to be paid attention to, was when we were doing uh, High Street last year, and mm. the uh, company that was vibrating the new asphalt, when they yeah. went right over the valve, the vibrations went right down and cracked yeah. the pipe. That's a big problem. But, I mean, they fixed it. I mean, because it, it seems there are a held. lot of them occurring mm, recently. You know, just like the gas company a couple of years ago had to go through the process of eliminating all the steel pipe. Yeah. Aquarian eventually has to yeah. look at all their aged yeah. pipe and go through that same process. But yeah. I don't know. I mean, I know they have a planned replacement and they do work with us to discuss. For instance, yeah. Lock Road would be done in mm -hmm. Portland. So it, it's, it's not a major hindrance for us mm -hmm. from that perspective. But as I'm seeing all the notices come out. I've, I've been a little concerned. And finally, the uh, Mill Pond Dam, I'm, I understand that some of the subcontractors still have not been compensated. Fred, is that, do we have any new news on that? Nothing. I hope that's not going to impic, impact your ability to hire subcontractors in the future. That's a disaster. I don't think so. Well. When they don't get paid, you don't hear. Thank you very much, though, for what you do. All right. I have a few questions, so if you don't, I'm just going to go down through your report, which is yep. actually a book. <laughs> Thank you for all the work you've done. And, um, yeah, the wooden truck inside of the town hall, I heard a lot of good comments about good. that. Everyone loved it. And uh, thank you, Mikey and whoever else built that. It's pretty impressive. Um, okay, so... I thought so anyway. I sat in it and got a picture taken. So for the, um, for the, I got a few things, so it's going to take some time. And I try to make it, I mean, I would like it so that you guys don't have to come to all of our meetings. So for the wastewater treatment plant facility upgrades, has there been anything actually replaced or repaired as part of that phase one yet? Or are we still in the you know, study Planning. process. Yeah. Things have been breaking. Associated piping, associated pumps, things like that have been breaking right along, which they normally do. Yeah. And we had 875 pieces of moving equipment. What has been happening is, if it's being repaired or replaced under our maintenance budget, um, Mike Doobie and Mike Carl call right here and say, hey, listen, this is what we're thinking of doing. Will this part that we put in can it be reused? Is that the way, where we're going? And so there's a lot of communication between them uh, anytime any of that stuff is done. But it's mm -hmm. no significant things um, so far has been done. The only thing I can think of that's uh, of an expensive item is it was the uh, stainless steel container for the grit. We made sure that the container that we're ordering and buying will match and be used in the future. No. because of how much it costs. Good. So we, that's why we waited somewhat long yeah. on that particular container. Good. That's the only thing that I'm aware of. Um, there was one other pump, and it was the same exact thing. They Perfect. called up, made sure, was this the efficiency that they wanted, and those type of things, so it will be reused. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And then we're going to be having, you're going to be doing the final design, and then I assume after you talk with them again, you'll be coming back to yes. Uh, yes. get us that information. Okay, great. And then the next thing I have is you already addressed Smutty Nose, so that's good to hear. And on these reports that you gave us with the BOD and the total waste and mm -hmm. the cost, yep. so right now if we go according to this, we're going to be about half a million to six hundred for trash. No, for recycling to haul out, and then you're guessing maybe about a hundred, another hundred thousand on top of that for trash. No, I, I think. Um the trash numbers will come in similar to what last year's were, mm -hmm. about the half a million. But you can see that's what we've traditionally spent. Yeah. It was, it's the uh, $100,000 penalty right, for contamination it. that I didn't have or, or didn't get approved in the default budget. Yeah. So that's the real pinch. But 
we've already realigned our budget operating wise uh, to cover that. So um, it'll come out, but it'll be tight. Yeah, it's very important that the recycling education is, yep. <laughs> because I mean, it seems the bags are the huge thing for us still right now and food being in. Mm -hmm. So that's very important, Regina, and I was gonna say that earlier. Just because you've used a paper plate doesn't mean the paper plate is recyclable if it has your macaroni salad or your ketchup from your hamburger. The paper plate is only recyclable if it's the Clean. paper plate. Yeah. Um, the wet products that get the cardboard wet or the dirtied food, that's contamination. Yeah. So, so again, it's, you know, recycle simply, recycle smart, you know, keep it to the basics. But could we make a statement and say anything that has food on it, you need to throw away? Yes. I mean, and that, what that about is if anything is wet, like a cardboard box? It's garbage. So any wet paper is not recycled. Correct. Yeah. Good. Yep. Okay. Mill Pond Dam is good. Oh, Church Street. We closed. Did we close Church Street on Friday? I didn't even know. Or was that? Cause so... I do want to jump in there because usually that's in my wheelhouse of I've been contract uh, contacting with Aquarian with Aquarian's contract there are contractors RPD their flaggers our staff as everybody knows this has been a lot of people working in an area we addressed road closures there was a notice that did go out that they could, Church Street could potentially be closed in fact I got two or three calls saying when and I tried to reassure them, I wanted to give you notice that we're doing construction and I did it for Aquarian because it's our roadway and wanted yeah. people to know what's going on. These are not full blown road closures. Maybe the box is taking up a little bit too much lane. So for that hour or two, the road is closed. Um, I do not know how long it was closed on Friday. It honestly could have been a combination of Voli finishing the connection at the pump station meaning they were backing up right onto Church Street with their equipment. And then um, I believe it was Friday, it could have been Thursday, Aquarian had a water main break down there. Mm -hmm. So we had yeah. multiple um, vehicles in there. <coughs> and when they had the water break, that was, uh, that was a big one. I mean, I thought at first they were installing mm -hmm. a water feature, not so much. Mm -hmm. um, so they needed to get in there. Yeah. And when you're working on 101, and I know we call it Church Street, but that opens up to a higher speed area and, and for safety reasons sometimes if you have yeah. people trying to get through or the cars are backing or excuse me trucks are backing perpendicularly mm -hmm. to traffic it's just safer to close for that period so unfortunately i don't have an answer for how long it was yeah. um, but i believe I that it was temporary six hours. six hours it was six hours yeah. so you know that is that is something I will work with Aquarian and Jamco to make sure that they are getting me the notices mm -hmm. and I will get them up as uh, fast as we can. Yeah. Okay, and then the last question I have is the Church Street Force Main relocation. So when you take away the temporary pipe, that all that pipe that's on the side of the road is gonna be gone. Mm -hmm. Correct. Because I get calls about how they're worried about people crashing into it, you know, in the summertime, but it didn't happen last year, so I don't think it will we happen this year. We are hoping that in the next two weeks, it's mm -hmm. gone. It's done. Right now, it's a cleaning it out. Yeah. They come, they cut it back up, they put it back on the truck in the 50-foot segments that they got delivered in, uh -huh. uh, and, and it's and it's removed. So okay. we, we want to go with the positive thinking that we got this far um, and stay alert mm -hmm. out there. And you said all the factual information as far as trash and recycling that we received tonight, you're going to get over to the trash committee yes. yes so yes we have Perfect. a whole bunch of thank you information. they're going to be getting reams of paper <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they're not it's not necessarily books <laughs> the, the asset management software it's great to hear that you're using that it's working well is there any way that you can figure out what kind of a savings that is in you know at the time or or anything I, else i think the savings is that you know i'm not before you asking for more management help that I'm not asking for another $80,000 yeah. position with 50,000 in benefits. That's really the savings. And yeah. streamlining in the efficiency that things are getting done quicker uh, and maybe not being lost. In the past, I know we used to, you know, you write everything on little white yeah. slips of paper and then yeah. the next thing you pick yeah. up the phone call and the, who knows what happened to the white slip of paper. Yeah. So, um, so th those are the real, that and in the, in the planning. Good. And, the CIP plan. and I do want to add, and not to be, you know, any type of misleading, we could have a full-time GIS person 
constantly making forms, constantly updating inventories. Um, it, it's how fast you move forward mm -hmm. with the programs. Yeah. Right now, we all know a little bit of it. Uh, the engineering technician does a lot of the master mining behind it. Uh, but we'll sit there and say, hey, can you do this? Can you create this? Can you do that? And that's amongst the other work that he's also doing. Um, so I can tell you, you know, the as built maybe for one of the roads that we've been trying to get into CAD for the last year and a half hasn't gotten done because we've been working yep. on yep. this. So um, it's efficient because we all can see what's going on. Right, right. And it'd be good to document that somehow yeah. just, just so that when you go for more software or something or more software training, you, you can show what the savings are yep. overall. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's great to see that the, you're getting ready with the wastewater treatment plant, the metal pond, and the, study, the harbor studies. So that's great. I did want to say that the uh, transfer station is the friendliest transfer station in the world. Uh, where I used to live in Western Mass, every time I went to the transfer station, I got in an argument. And every time I leave the transfer station here, I'm very happy because there's <laughs> such pleasant people there. So a, a big kudos to them. Um, the other thing is on the recycling. I'm a big recycler. And I'm just, I feel guilty all the time now because I'm following your advice mm -hmm. that if I'm in doubt, it goes in the trash. Yeah. And things that I used to, so I think people really have to follow that, mm -hmm. that if they're in doubt, Yep. Throw it out. Throw, mm -hmm. throw it in the trash because... Yeah, you have to because yeah. if, if we see sections of the contaminated, we're going to literally do it for you and put it right in the trash. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. given the volume, we don't have the time to sort <coughs> it at our end. Yeah. So very good report. Excellent. Thank you. I know you got stickers coming out for the bins, but is there any sort of flyer that's going out that we could have maybe possibly here or at, like, Morelli's or the mm -hmm. other stores So that around. is part of the flyers that were developed that have actually been posted to the website. They have been done in a format that we can, in fact, do that. Uh, leave them with local businesses, uh, want to get them back into the schools come next school year, uh, want to make sure that this isn't just a one-time education but a continued education yeah. as we go forward. And uh, I did see the PSA from on uh, the, the rec department did with you, you guys help, and I think that was very good to inform some people. There were some people asking why, why uh, Kids Kingdom wasn't up, and I think that, that explained yeah. it very well. And yeah. as of um, even early this morning, we hope to do something very similar with the recycling uh, I and I the trash. The PSAs so. will work well. And then uh, I saw you out there uh, directing traffic, not directing traffic, but traffic control. Traffic mm -hmm. control. And I know you were out there covering somebody's lunch. I was. And I think that was great. I think that's. Uh, shows your commitment to this town, shows your commitment to getting that job done on time. Um, we usually like to have police officers out there, but sometimes we can't do that. Sometimes they're not available. And I think uh, instead of shutting a job down for a half hour or 45 minutes, for you to go out there is admirable. So. Thank you. I agree with yeah. that. Yeah. Um, the one thing I wanted to ask, um, like you, you've talked about putting the um, stickers uh, about the recycling on the uh, bins. What about the other issues that are concerning about the bins, like where people fill them too much? Uh, like, it's amazing how many people do a good job, and then you'll come along, and you'll, you know, there'll be hundreds of bins on Ocean Boulevard, and everybody will have their bins closed, and then you'll come along with somebody that's got four bins and every one of them is open to the top and the bin is open and the birds can get at it mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So are you going to be able to address those so that people that might be coming to visit this year are aware that they need to make sure the tops are closed? Yes, um, we already have a process where you get the orange sticker similar to like an abandoned car mm -hmm. on the side of the road. So that's um, ongoing. Yeah, and you also get a visit from either Chris McGinnis or Ryan Sharp or one of those gentlemen uh, informing you that you can't, you know, repeatedly do that, mm -hmm. that uh, we're not going to come by and pick them up. Uh, matter of fact, we, we don't. There was one at the corner, of, I think, Landing Road and Winnicunit, and it stayed there for about a week till they figured it out that mm -hmm. the styrofoam had to come out of the container and it, it was a matter somebody had to stop by it was it was oh, a new, I saw new that resident. one it was yeah. all barreled over the sides mm. yeah mm. yeah but, uh, no it, it it takes you know it's some 
it's ongoing education mm -hmm. that's we've come to realize well thank you thank you for your report it, um, uh, mrs quick, wolseley yeah before you leave because no. under old business we have the fixed waste co oh, waste yeah. collection schedule and fred and i have discussed this um instead of having you having to put notices up and whatever can will you at least give some thought or the bo board should give some thought of having the regular collection days pertain all year round whether it's a holiday or whatever if your pickup is wednesday for trash and recycling that's what it is year round and i know it will result in some overtime for some of the crews but it should stop us with the messes and people didn't know what they have to do and whatever so if you Fred, do you want to add to that? Because it will result in overtime and it will result in additional training of individuals so not everybody gets stuck on the same every single day of the year. Right. And we also will not be able to prevent any of those delays due to Mother Nature. So right. the way yeah. our trash schedules are inherently built currently, yeah. and this will be part of the stuff that we go through at the Solid Waste Committee, is that we're a Monday through Thursday with a little bit on Friday is what I call right. it root. And right. that's purposely done because we're already at this max capacity of that if we have it trucked down mm -hmm. or there is weather right. that we have that extra day in the schedule to do something. But if you have a fixed schedule, you don't have to have people. And your website is very good. But so people just know that's your day, Wednesday, yeah. whatever. Yeah. It's something that the board could consider. I just would yeah, caution that uh, it, yeah. it's your discussion. Yeah, we're going to talk about it next. Yeah, good. Did you have yeah, I just want to say, I think some people get confused. We have never, on Monday holidays in the summertime, you have always picked up. Right. So if it's Correct. a Memorial Day Monday. Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day. If you think right. of our beach community, the reason that we collect on those Mondays yeah. to not be confused and just take them off, because yeah. the, the flip side of collecting all of the holidays yeah. is not collecting all the holidays. So what we've done by having that split schedule is saying the Christmas that isn't the busy schedule, the Thanksgiving yeah. that isn't the busy yeah. schedule, uh, the other holidays that we are actually closed, the President's yeah. Day, those type of things, the holidays that the town observes uh, as part of our holiday schedule. Yeah. The reason we change Memorial Day, Fourth of July, and Labor Day is to provide <coughs> that additional service of because of its high intense use. It's not meant to confuse anybody. It's actually to say we're going to still give you on those services on those days because yeah. we think that you're going to need it i think but after watching for the last 15 years your way of doing it is working far superior to anything else that's been done and there are issues when something breaks down and that's a different issue mm -hmm. and uh, i think you've done a nice job mm -hmm. so thank you but people don't remember from year to year what well, you do in the they, summer they, they need to that's why we're here that's why it, that's you know messy. uh these things are done over and over again and it's not always as bad as people think it is and there think, are improvements made i think they've done a better job too at your website and yes. also getting it on the town. Thank website. you, Rusty, mm -hmm. for saying that because that was something I pointed out to Mary Louise as a thank you for reminding us that we have tools. And I don't know if any of you have seen beyond uh, what was presented to you for the new town website, but this is one happy person, like super <laughs> smiling over the new tool that is going to be available for yeah. calendars, yeah. for announcements, for notification. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it just It's an amazing um, yeah. new platform we're yeah. about to have. It's a good site, though, but when 90% of my yes. neighbors didn't yeah. have their yeah. carts yeah. out, yeah. Talk about that. Yeah. Uh, help. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for your report. We appreciate it. Yeah. We have two other. Jenna well, I has thought you, one other. I just asked, Brad. I thought we did okay. that. Which one? What? You want to talk about rental? I do. Yeah. Oh. You want to talk about something else? Oh. Oh, okay. yeah. And I uh, want to talk about something else, but oh, good you're the boss man. You go first, and okay. it's more exciting. Um, okay. <laughs> Just as a general announcement, uh, we don't have any more 96-gallon carts. So as new people are asking for carts, uh, uh, for instance, uh, two new homes on McCarran Drive in the last week, uh, they were issued, well, they can either take 35 or 64s. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't have any 96 to offer, period. Mm -hmm. uh, that was stripped from the budget this year, and mm -hmm. we didn't replace any last year. Okay. Um, so just something to keep in mind. We have a fairly good amount of the 64s but eventually they will run out and we will have to order something okay um, with respect to the uh, I also gave to everyone uh, this particular uh, flyer 
uh, something I had uh, yeah. with my vacation overlooked to do, and that was uh, I have to get a your off authorization to lease one sidearm truck. I believe it was presented last year that one way of controlling yeah. our or keeping our budget yeah. in check was we would actually get rid of all three sidearm trucks because we were spending about 25000 a year maintaining each every one. Well, I can lease for the, the peak 13-week period a sidearm truck for uh, 24900 um, uh -huh. for the three months. Uh, I need another one, 2100 to cover the transportation to get it from Ohio to here. It is a brand new uh, sidearm truck. It would be leased through Premier Leasing. Um, similar to any other, you know, how you'd lease a, a vehicle or a pickup truck from U-Haul or, or uh, anyone else. The only thing we have to cover on it is uh, oil changes if it were need if it needed one, but we won't have it for that long, and a tire if it happens to cut mm -hmm. a tire. That's about the only thing we'd have to repair on yeah. it. But that, in an effort to control our um, physical, um, the, the vehicle maintenance line, yeah. Uh, that's why we decided to do this. So uh, I apologize for not, it not making the agenda, but it's a specific request to do we need a give motion, Frank. Fred? Yes, sir, you do. I have a question after. So is this coming, this 27000 will come from the, probably the maintenance line because- It would come from the maintenance line, and when I put together my default budget, I kept this money in the default line, okay. so I have the money. All right. Thank you. Does someone want to make a motion? I'll, I'll so move. And we don't have any extra vehicles now in the yard. This is going to replace or Correct. whatever. We have four. Full. Nothing sitting out there. We have a first. We have a second. Good. Any other questions? Yep. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Any other? I have one yeah. more. Um, in your packets, I believe there was a letter uh, addressed to uh, Mr. Jones. This is a letter I put together. Did it not make your packets? Yeah, I saw it. Oh, okay. Um, this is a letter that I put together uh, with the gentleman from UNH that I am working with on the flood studies for Meadow Pond. Yep. Um, they have an opportunity to take the sensors that we have actually purchased and continue the monitoring for another two years. Oh, good. Um, right. What they have asked us to do is write a letter of recommendation to the grant that they are applying for, and this is where we're all sort of supporting we each other. You just signed it. You just signed it. Okay, so with that, I say it. thank you. Because yeah. I just read it as we signed it. <laughs> so that is just another way that uh, we continue gathering information. Okay. Right, so we can continue to monitor both situations. So that data years. will be shared with Excellent. us, right. and we'll be Good. sharing our data with them. Thank you. You do a great job. I know you want to get home and go to maybe the couch. a glass of yes. wine. Before. <laughs> thank okay. you. Okay. Enjoy. Thank, thank you, you for much. coming in tonight. Thank you. Now, is uh, Skip Webb not coming tonight? I don't see I him seen now. Skip. So Deb that brings you, uh, this is, is uh, Couture. If you want to join us at the table. You know, while Deborah is coming up, I'm, I'm going to say I think it's very uh, unfortunate that we have to have people come in here a couple of times a year on the stupid parking. Why okay, can't we? Well, why don't we let her do her talking? Well, she did she her talking earlier, and she's having to come back again. Okay, and I well, think let's that's let her do it bad. tonight. Let her complain. That's too bad. Instead, you. Hi. I have no place to park. Yeah. I mean, I'm on F Street. I can't park on that street. Um, when I leave during the day, when I come home, I can't park nowhere. There's nowhere literally for me to park, so I have to go back to my son's house and stay there and wait till after either midnight yeah. to come back home to park. That's ridiculous. I mean, I'm tired. Um, I'm not used to walking a mile away from my car to get mm. to my house. Mm. And I can't park in the police station where I parked before because they'll tow my car, they said, because I talked to... Rhonda was her name. Yeah. She says, if you park there, yeah, we'll tow you. Okay. So I have no place to park. Okay. And she's so got her hand Okay, play. Mrs. Woolsey, please, let's let her talk or let me uh, recognize people here on the board. You have your plate. Rusty. Yeah. I yes. Was, uh, do you have a handicap placard? Yeah. I have a plate. You have a handicap plate. Yeah, and I have the, 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 the sticker. Chart. The sticker. Then by okay. the town statue, you're allowed to park in that parking lot for free. Rhonda told me no. I don't know who Rhonda is. But she works at the police. She's a, she's a, I guess she's an officer. I went Fred? into the police station. Yes. 
Overnight parking is not permitted in that parking lot unless you have a leased space. Yeah, she showed me um, <coughs> a, a thing, a, a, like a tag, it was green. She says you have to have one of these. And that's legal. If, if, if in fact the town has a regulation that says that overnight parking is not permitted without a, without a special lease, all right, mm -hmm. then in fact you can be ticketed and, and towed. Uh, the only way that can be exempted is if the selectmen exempt it. You make those regulations so you're allowed to exempt it. I mean, I, I, I feel bad for this woman, but the, the places down there that have, that by rights when you rent a place, you're supposed to provide parking. It's in the it. ordinance, that by zoning ordinance, that if you have a place that you lease apartments or units from, yeah. you have to provide parking at some location at the beach. And they're not. And, and most of our landlords that go through that situation have leased parking at the beach that they pay for for their tenants. Mm -hmm. This particular case, that is not the case. Do we have any recourse to go back on the on the landlord? Um, the only thing that we issue is a, uh, a rental permit authorization, and I suspect that if they're in violation of the rental requirements in the ordinance, you could revoke it. But that means that all those people have to move. This is terrible. Making oh, Mrs. Wolseley, please let's wait until it's your turn to talk. And, and, and I, I think it is terrible, but I think it's certain businesses down there that have to come forward and, and do what they're supposed to do. Uh, you know, and, and I, I, think, I think that's the, the case here, not the case that, you know, we, we, we gave her space to park over the winter. Yeah. And, but it is their responsibilities. Yeah. It is, and it's in the ordinance, as I understand it, from talking to the planning board, that that is a requirement. Uh, it's not a requirement this particular landlord apparently is willing to um, adhere to. What's the cost of a lease? I'd have to. I, I don't. Off the top of my head, I don't. I don't. Anybody know approximately? No. I think it's like a thousand, isn't it? A year or something. I mean, it, it, is there any hardship? It depends. That, if it's a if it's a lease from um, the state, it depends on how much money comes in. Now, what I was I mean, the lease in our block. In our block. It's a set yeah. fee, but I can't recall what yeah. the fee but is. But what I'm talking about also, is there any kind of a hardship application for somebody uh, on, a, on a lower income to apply? We went through no, this. No, it's not in the ordinance. It's something that you would have to enact and put in the ordinance, or you'd have to allow a discount in the ordinance. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, Jim? No, right now. No, okay. Okay. Mrs. Wolseley. This is ridiculous. This is the second time she's in. She certainly uh, can't go frisking along the streets. We ought to have the confounded landlord pay for parking space for her or do something. This is terrible. Okay. It's an insult. Any other to the comments? Community. Was Regina? I think the uh, Board of Selectmen should try to reach out to the landlord and see what he has to say. I mean, that's not fair. I mean, I understand that what's hard about it is she's handicapped, okay, one, which. She, but we have, we have the law that you can't park overnight. So it's ridiculous. But yet the original law is what Rusty said. The landlord is supposed to provide parking. Correct. If he's not provided parking, I mean, I think can we at least send out a letter or something from well, the board? It sounds to me like this is a uh, issue for the um, planning board. They are the ones that make sure that people are supposed to have parking. And there's going to be another issue I'm going to bring up tonight about another group that are not using their own parking either. And they it's another issue that the planning board has to take care of. So is this a planning board issue? It's a combination between planning board and selectmen because you control the parking lots. They control the zoning ordinance uh, because they request the enactments of the regulations. Uh, I would think that... Uh, in this particular case, this building probably predates site plan approval. Okay, well, we're going to need to find that out. Ron just said at the police station, if I get that green tag, if you guys get me the green tag, I can park there all, all night. Correct. I can park yeah. there. I should it's, live close to I'll make state. a motion that, the, that we as a board send the um, landlord mm -hmm. the regulations and state that we have a problem with him and what is his intentions on correcting it? Okay. And copy the planning board. Right. And, and copy, copy it to the board. planning board. I'll, I'll second that. I think that. it's a planning board issue myself. Yeah. 
I'll second Rusty's oh, please, motion. Please, let's listen to Well, do you other mind people. if I make a second? Not until other people he have moved. a chance to talk. Yeah, well, you have someone here that wants to talk, Mrs. Wolseley. You're not the only one. Normally, so when you make stop. a motion, you get We're a second. We're going to listen to him, and then we'll hear what you've got to say. The, um, is it the building department who gives an occupancy? Permit? They do. All right, so. The, so it's only you, once every 10 years. Okay. And, and who gives the rental, approves rentals, the building? That, that is the rental verification, is the occupancy approval okay. for the building department. So could the building department right now say, before a letter, you know, letter goes, but the building department go down and say, you're not providing parking. Why aren't you providing parking? Uh, I think we probably Rusty's uh, comment is a good one because we can put that in writing to the landlord, cite the particular sections of the ordinance that apply, cite the particular problem that applies and ask him what his intentions are and request that he in fact follow the ordinance and copy the uh planning yeah. board because but, we have this issue in more yeah. than one spot what are we going to do what are we going to that's okay that's what we're talking about here tonight yeah. so do you have anything else to say no i'm set okay Mrs. what do Wolseley. we do in the meantime the what poor do you woman suggest? how many times you wanted to, to make that you wanted to make Get her a, a parking do you space. want to make a motion mrs wills mr do you just wanted to make a motion? Now you don't want to. Rusty made a motion and I seconded it. Okay. okay. And what is this poor woman going to do? Hopping back and forth here. We need help for her now. Okay. Regina, do you have anything else to say? No, I'll go with the motion with uh, okay, you want to what I said. Your motion? To I, I make a motion that we send these landlord whoever it is that owns this piece of property, mm -hmm. what the problem is, mm -hmm. yeah. well, and what are his right. intents to correct it. Yeah. Because right now we have a problem with one of his tenants that doesn't, who has a park, that has a handicapped parking sticker that is not able to park in the town lot because mm -hmm. he's not following the rules. Mm -hmm. right. And I, I would say we send that out this week. But what does she do in the meantime? So I would send, she sends that out this week. I would send it to the, have the building inspector send it out. I would have a copy of it go to the uh, planning board. And I would suggest that we have a, a, a time frame of when he needs to get back to us. Can mm -hmm. we do within, an interim? Within <laughs> six or eight, seven, eight, eight, eight. seven days. Rusty, seven can we days. do an interim? Minute, would, Mrs. Wellesley, please, we'll recognize you in a minute. Can we, we do just an, recognize you and you had nothing to say. Can now, we do an wait interim a moment, parking Mrs. arrangement Wellesley, when we, for her? We will wait until we just let's, talk Let's get this motion done first. Okay. All right. And I so seconded it. You seconded it. That's okay. Right. So it's a seven day. Seven day. He, we, get them back with a seven day return of what his plan is to correct it. Okay. And you second that. I correct. did. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Now I'll make a second motion that we allow this woman 14 days to park in the lot. Right. Uh, I'll make an amendment to that. Sure. And that we build the landlord. Sure. I'll second days. that. Sure. Um, so she's so, so it's not a freebie. It's going to be billed to somebody. But she will have something in her hand. That what, will tonight? be ability to pay. Well, she can't get it tonight. But the office isn't open. But well, she'll come out, come out tomorrow, and we can make sure she has something. Now, who does she can, see? She would have to see Christina. Christina in the town manager's office. Tomorrow. And she can she can run through the problem with the, with the finance office, and we'll get this. Handled. Right, and we bill a property owner for that until right. we and can find out. She'll have documentation. What if he, um, evicts me because I'm doing this. Uh, he can't well, evict you if it's his obligation. Yes. Right. Another, if he evicts you, then he's not going to be, and that's his obligation. He's not going to be able to rent any units. And then it's a civil matter for you if yeah. that happens. She needs and are we going to send all this in writing to the planning board so they can realize yeah. that what we have to yes, deal with when they don't? Yes, that's part of the motion, so it should be done. Okay, good. So we have a first, we have a second. All those in favor, unanimous. Thank so you. that's what we can do so for you. So come up tomorrow morning, you can, you can see Christina in the office, and she will have you a, a thing for 14 days, which hopefully by then we'll have this all settled. And so technically, if you have a... Uh, if you have a uh, Whatever a, a handicap, handicap, a handicap, park handicap park. Yeah, you can park in any state uh, space. Also, I don't know where's oh the they're all up and street. down. Yeah, yeah, I've been parking on the street, but I have to wait 
like I said, Toad, yeah. everybody clears off the beach, which yeah. is after midnight. I know that we all have problems. Yeah. You know, I'm oh. sorry about your problems, but this happens. And How come we don't have a parking, like a handicap thing on F Street? We can't have it at all. The street's not wide enough, and that's why they have a problem with that street. No. That's why there's no parking so at all. So thank you for coming in so tonight. So where, after she sees Christina tomorrow, where is she going to be allowed to park? In the town parking lot for the two weeks. Where's that? For two weeks. Where, where you've been parking all winter. Yeah. You mean in the police station parking lot? It's not yeah. the police station, it's the town parking lot. Well, that's a town parking yeah. lot. And it's for two weeks, and then we'll bring it up at the meeting so you can watch it right. on TV if you can't make it in. Okay. Or you can catch it on um, online. But it will be brought up in two weeks when we, is that when we meet the next? Yes, sir. Yeah. We'll be bringing it up and hopefully uh, we hopefully get that letter out there. Resolved. So I go see Christina tomorrow and she's going to give me something in writing? Yes. And I bring it to the police station? Sure. No, you put it on, you put it on your, your the, the rear view mirror of your car. Oh, okay. So she's going to give me one of those green stickers? Yeah, a temporary that, one, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank, thank you very you. much. Okay. Moving Thank you. on to the town manager's can I just, report. Can yeah. I just, on Sir. This, we really should have an application or something for people to fill out exactly why they're in a, 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 a situation like this and, you know, with income verification and all that. I mean, you really should know exactly what we're doing. I mean, we're doing this this time, but we really should have a process for there doing this. There is actually an application to get a certificate to park in the parking lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. The yep. deals with most of those. Oh, most of those questions. Well, okay. if they had the parking to begin with, it wouldn't be an issue. Right. That's true. <laughs> okay, moving on to the town manager's <laughs> report. Mr. Chair, members of the board, uh, I don't think I need to review the uh, 101 Church Street uh, main requirements. They are in effect. They, we've been using it since last Friday, uh, which I think is a grand thing. We, we put a lot of effort into that. Um, the hearing is tomorrow night here. Uh, regarding well 22 uh, at 7 p.m. at the um, town, let's see, town manager's room, I believe. Um, please, we, we need input from people regarding the well 22 and the PFOs and the PFAs and all the other materials that, that uh, are, uh, we're interested in. Mr. Chairman, I had a call today from uh, Bill McGuire, who was on the, uh, the chairman of the um, Seabrook Village Precinct Commission. Uh, they are putting signs up on all the entrance roads going into Seabrook Beach, uh, actually at the beach entrances. And they would like permission to put one up at the Seabrook, uh, Hampton Seabrook <laughs> entrance, which is the entrance we use. Uh, it, it also services all the people from Seabrook at that end. And basically it describes how to, how to protect yourself from rip currents gives you telephone numbers, gives you survival information. Uh, and I told them I would ask the board tonight if that was okay to put that sign up on the beach as you step onto the beach surface so people could see it and read it. It's gonna be reflective on both sides. Sure. I'll make that idea. motion. I'll second it. All those in favor, unanimous. Okay. Um, Thank you, Seabrook. <laughs> they're, they're doing some good work there with that one. Um, I want you to pay attention. I. I gave you a copy of Senate Bill Number 22 mm -hmm. yeah. uh, in your in your handouts today. I think you should read that material. Um, basically, uh, this can be petitioned to a town meeting. This guy, this bill has not been signed by the governor yet, but we expect it to be signed in the next couple of days. It's sitting on his desk. Uh, the bill would allow a town meeting by petition or or by an article placed by the selectmen to give up to a 50% 10-year tax credit on all new uh, commercial property or all renovated commercial property. It's uh, similar to what happened at the uh, condo project that had been leased five years ago or built five years ago, except this is much, much bigger. And it, uh, it either takes, by petition, either the entire um, town and all of its commercial properties or it could take an individual commercial property you yeah. on this petition to the town meeting. So I think you should read that, that section on Bill 22 just so you have some information. Uh, there's already been some whispering with regards to uh, Liberty Lane and all the new buildings that are projected to be put up down there. Yeah. That in fact they may want this 50% projection from taxes for the next 10 years on all yeah. those buildings. So. That's not something they've submitted for, but there's all kinds of whispering going on about it. 
The legislature has also passed a bill renaming Lafayette Road as the Lafayette Trail. Uh, the state will, with, in conjunction with the American Friends of Lafayette, be putting signage up uh, through Hampton with regards to that particular facility. That's the result of uh, Senate Bill Number 217, which was signed by the governor recently. Um, interesting situation. There's also uh, a new bill that was signed that, that, that allows um, that requires certain testing uh, for schools and certain emergency plans for schools. I've sent that to the police department and the fire department uh, for their information, and that's going to be implemented this year. Uh, I'm sure you're going to hear a lot more about that as time goes along. Just found the bill today. It's been signed by the governor and put into effect. Yeah, there's a lot of inf information and planning that needs to go into that, but it's going to be very good for the safety of our schools and our school children. Uh, I, I hope you all got the second water main break notice today yep. for uh, the, the water main going across the marsh. We have been working diligently, as the board has instructed us to do, on these six pieces of property, uh, the six uh, that, that, in fact, um, were having problems with certification on uh, FEMA for their certification for uh, FEMA certification for uh, complying with their regulations. Five of them are done, uh, and several of them need work to be accomplished on the individual pieces of property. Considering this is holding up our interest reduction rates uh, and, and tax and insurance rates for all the FEMA property in town, since these few properties, and this, these properties have already paid a bill for this, uh, are going to have to have building permits to do the work that's required. Uh -huh. I'm asking tonight that the, the selectman would, as long as the work is done in this calendar year, excuse the building permits for this particular work so sure. we can get it done and get it out of the way. And it will help Do we need a motion for that? I do need a motion okay. for it, sir. Do we have a motion for that? I'll make a motion for that. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All so, so they're not, they don't have to take out a building permit. They have they, to take it out. They have to take it out, but oh. they wouldn't have to pay a fee for it. Oh, okay. Mm. Still right. got to get the permit. And you just still got to abide by all the buildings. Just on these particular oh, pieces yes. of property. All the requirements will have to be abided by. Okay. And just for the renovations to bring it up to the to FEMA to standards. The code. FEMA standards. So we, we're waiving this for them so that they can do the work to bring it up yes. to code. Right. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. I did give the board a uh, draft copy, and I'll emphasize that the words draft, of uh, the first 28 warrant articles. Mm -hmm. It basically yeah. repeats from last year uh, the stated warrant articles that go into the warrant uh, with the, the new dollar figures. Out. The, the park and recreation one needs to be further work, but uh, that's for your information. And I've also given you a copy of the uh, um, CIP for uh, this coming year, and that'll be on your agenda for your next meeting to grant authority to pass it on to the CIP committee so they can have the opportunity to review it and do a report on it for you. Mm -hmm. um, we also, I have also amended uh, in draft form the JOP to the State uh, Department of Natural and Cultural Resources in compliance with the request of the director. Uh, I reviewed all of his, his uh, requested suggestions and changes, and they don't affect us at all. In fact, they continue to work diligently with us if we, in fact, do those. I sent those to him. I have not received a response back yet, but I wanted you to know they're out there because I think that is very, very important. That's it, sir. Okay. Can you go over... Um, oh, one, uh, oh, one more thing. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh-oh. Uh, no. Non-public session. Go ahead. Can you go <laughs> over about the water break line across the marsh so the public is informed? <clears throat> the, the water line that runs to the beach, um, <clears throat> the lower beach, comes across the marsh and goes to the water tower and then goes to a distribution system yep. on the south end of the beach. Mm -hmm. uh, they have had two breaks in that line. It runs through the marsh, similar to... Uh, sewer line that ran through the marsh and it's incidentally made of the same material I understand as the sewer line that ruptured. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been there for quite a number of years and we're in the process of replacing it at this point. They did have a, a break about a week ago and I was told there was a geyser coming up through the, uh, the marsh <laughs> uh, because of course it's under pressure. Uh, they fixed that. They had another break uh, today. Uh, 
a little closer to um, Church Street, and I believe they fixed that as well. So uh. um, they do need to replace that line, and they are active working, actively working on it. So hmm. I think that's a good thing. Hopefully this thing will be taken care of in short order. Questions that are on the town manager's report. Mrs. Wolseley. Fred, uh, speaking of water main breaks, uh, ma'am. After the mess that I put up with a year ago, uh, I th I'm really happy to see that we are getting timely reports, and you are getting reports like f at 433 High Street as the Aquarian mains break, and there have been quite a few of them breaking, but at least it keeps us on top of it. So, they are there are a number of old mains in town, yep. and they, they do occasionally have a rupture. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I do notify the board members when I receive one. Oh, yes. And I also notify the individual departments yes. so that we're all sort of on the same schedule. But we don't have everybody mad like I was last year, at least I we're getting not. notices. I hope not. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Virginia? Fred, on the JOP, so we're waiting to hear back from them on that? Yes, we are. On, the, on the proposed changes. On the, and do those changes include doing something for the... Uh, Rakings down by Epping? Not yet. I don't have the report back from the Public Works Director. He was meeting with them and they've oh, okay. got to analyze the materials that mm -hmm. are involved. Yeah. Okay, because it would be nice to get that on there. And as far as everything else goes, it seems like it's going to be pretty much standard operating procedures with state parks. Yeah. Um, you brought up the capital improvement plan, which I've actually started looking at fire and public works. Mm -hmm. And they were in tonight and pretty much everything they stated as their Warren article shows right here on their 2020 yeah. capital improvement plan, mm -hmm. about $3.4 million planned for 2020. Add that to what I've seen for the fire department so far, that's $4 million. So going back to state parks and their joint operations plan, the past three years they've transferred out of our Hampton Beach operations over $5 million. We're in process of doing about an 11.7 or $9 million <coughs> in wastewater treatment plant. We pick up their trash too, as well as our own commercial mm -hmm. businesses and condos. So I think perhaps one day we should all sit down and figure out what are we really getting back? They take a lot from us. Yes. Okay, soar, water, yes. everything. We pay for it. Yes. We make them money, which is good. We like making them money. It's great down there. I love it down there. So doesn't everyone that goes down. But money talks, right. okay? So if we're not gonna refile the suit, then let's at least get the legislators in here, like I've asked several times because there's other bills that they're coming up with, okay, where they want to get into our business, like they want to take over zoning board. Even though the mm -hmm. chairman of the zoning board here tells me it's probably not going to affect Hampton, mm -hmm. it's the whole point of it. We have an elected board that makes these decisions for their yep. community. Yep. We don't need the state coming in, yeah. and we definitely don't need the state coming in and harassing our superintendents and our school boards because they want to send someone here that thinks they know more about our kids yeah. and how to handle what's happening here better than anyone else. Yeah. Okay, so like I've said before, I want the legislators in here after the budget is done, which it's going to be done very soon, and I want them to explain what this budget's going to do and what it's going to give back to Hampton. Yeah. But they don't want to come because oh, we'll gee, be I wonder mean why. to them. No one's t accused the legislatures of not wanting to They're come. They're chickens. They don't want to come You're down You're talking here. about something different. You're talking They're about both. the people that work for the state. I agree, both the legislature them. is something different, and they're not um, causing any problems. They're the ones that the public voted in, and mm -hmm. that's the there, and we're here to work with them. Well, where are they, can they come in and explain what's going on in Concord? Have they been invited in? Have I've they asked not for an agenda. Up? They won't Have they on. not turned up? Every time we've invited them, they've been here. They've been right. here. Okay. Okay. So, so what's the issue? When the budget's over, I any... like our delegation in so they okay, can explain well, what it you, does. Okay, well, why don't you at right. that time make a motion and we'll do that. Yeah. You just said when the budget's finished. It's a long ways from being finished. Now, do you want to make a motion now to invite them in? It should be in? done sometime in July. They should be wrapped up with it. Okay. Well, June. then... June. June. It has to be June. finished by June 30th. Well, it June doesn't 30th. have to be. It's just they don't get paid for yeah. mileage if they don't. Oh. <laughs> it's usually finished by It's usually June finished. June 30th. So maybe, so maybe for it sometime in July? Just yeah, well, sometime. Fred, when you're uh, dealing with the different people, we'll be you happy can to invite them to your uh, first uh, meeting in July. 
Okay. Mm. And or maybe we need to wait two weeks after that just to give them plenty of time. <laughs> and, and we'll we'll inquire Mrs. as to Wolfley, what's the best. Mrs. Wolfley, no one appreciates your little snide comments. Well, nobody appreciates your little snide comments either. Yeah. Well, please keep them to yourself. Rusty. I'm also the town manager's reporter. All set. Okay. Um, thank you, uh, Fred, for your report. Thank you, sir. Moving thank on you, to old business. The fix we do waste. Do we want to talk about that now? It's you want up, to fill us in, Fred? It's up to you, Mr. You Chairman. To Come on. <laughs> we'll let I, you start. The, the comment, uh, as, as Mr. Wolsey explained to me, was, that, and we did talk about this briefly, was that she felt strongly that, that we should have a fixed schedule all year. Uh, that is to say, collect every day make it consistent all year long. Yeah. Uh, that's not what we're currently doing now. We yeah. are we have a different schedule for the summer from Memorial Day yeah. to after Seafood Festival and then the Seafood Festival is over with another schedule from there until Memorial Day again. So um, the winter time is very difficult to do a fixed schedule simply because we have that thing called snow which <laughs> tends to follow up the schedule no matter what we do. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think we have to take that into consideration. Uh, but given that, uh, that's probably the only thing that really delays our schedule and pickup. Okay, thank you. Well, I for <clears throat> one um, would like to leave it in the hands of our very capable DPW. They seem to have done a great job. Uh, they are monitoring uh, how the weather is, how it affects their department. So I, for one, am let it, if we're leaving it in their ballpark. Rusty. I think at this time, uh, with, with everything that's going on, I think they're doing the best job they can, and we should leave it the way it is. And Mr. Waddell? I think they're the experts. Thank you. Mrs. Wolseley. When I looked up my street last Wednesday, and saw that nobody had, uh, I had to start calling neighbors because they didn't have their waste out. And then I talked to Fred and I've talked to the Public Works Department. Let's leave the schedules or have the schedules because they, uh, Jen ran and put it up on the website because that website is well used. But I, I can see all these people screaming and hollering because nobody picked up the waste. So let's be consistent. If your pickup for trash and recycle is recycling is Wednesday, leave it on Wednesday for the whole year. Forget it. And Regina, I'm good, thank you. Does anyone want to make a motion to change it from the way that it is presently? I'll I'll move that we uh, have public works uh, set up the consistent schedule. Forget the winter schedule. Forget the summer schedule. Just have a year-round schedule with whatever assigned day of the week your waste is picked up, period. Do we have a second? Could, Seeing none. Could I make a different kind of motion? Yeah. Could I make a motion that we maybe publish the current, the schedule that we just got, which pretty much, didn't we get a schedule mm -hmm. when they pick it all up? Yep. Get that out, publish it but in it the was, proper places. It wasn't on. The website. Okay. Well, right. Can we ensure that it gets on the website and maybe, I don't know, put it in the paper if we have to, but do something to make sure that everyone gets to see it and understand it and print so it out and do whatever they want with it so they have it. If that's your vote, it'll happen. So let that. That would um, be my motion. So that's your motion. Do I'll we have a second? Our motion. Do we have a second? All those in favor, unanimous. Okay. That's a good Next. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we don't, we don't, I, I notice under old business, I, I notice we don't have a, uh, we used to have a, uh, a thing for final comments. Yes, we'll have one. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Do you um, <coughs> have any old business? Not at this time. Mr. Waddell? Not at this time. Mrs. Wolseley? Are we planning on doing every other Monday night for meetings? Because I think that's ridiculous. The schedule is, is already done. Does, is do you it? want to make a motion to change it? Feel free. Where is it? I think we need to be meeting every Monday night. So And getting work done. Do you want to put that in motion form? Well, I will happily do that. Well, do. I move that we go back to the common practice with the exception of holidays. We go back to the common practice of our Board of Selectmen meeting every Monday evening to conduct town business. Do we have a second for that? Seeing none, do you have any other old business? 
well, it's not worth putting forward. Thank you. Regina? I just have, I know Fred gave us a very preliminary stack of Warren articles. <laughs> would it be possible for the board to maybe consider having an additional Warren article that would cut the franchise fees at least in half? Yes. Excellent. Well, yeah, cut the franchise fees down to 40%. We take 4%, so no, I mean, well, what we actually collect as a town. Yeah. It's four percent. We get back, I'm right? I'm working on the article, but I haven't had it finished yet. Perfect. Can Thank I you. respond I, to that? Well, well, first of all, what what is it? The you cable mean? committee is investigating it. No, the cable committee. There's will a lot cut, of things will, going on. Everything will go on, and then it'll be, it has to come before the board of selectmen, right. anyways. And at that right. time, the board of selectmen make their recommendations on what they want to do. And what do you mean and by the, cutting the um, the franchise fee in the cable? The fee the town collects to cut the amount. Right. Yeah. In, 20, take. in 2016. The, the no, Board it. of Selectmen no. had unanimously <laughs> approved an increase in the franchise no. fees from 25% to 40%. Yeah. And I then when we got to the I deliberative, to stop interrupting me. me, when we got to the deliberative session, a it's motion was correct. made. That's what I mean. To devote We're not 100%. even talking about what you're talking about. A hundred percent. We're not talking about what you're talking about. And that's about. ridiculous. We're not talking about what you're talking well, about. You're talking Regina, about we're wanna, we want to finish one thing at a time, Mrs. Wolseley. Fred, Regina. is it correct that right now we get 4% back the town of Hampton for franchise fees? I believe it's 5. 5%. No, okay. it's 4. Is it 4? It's 4. 4%. I thought we had it's 4, for and, and when, the, when the final thing is brought I to understand. you, Mr. Chairman, there will be a budget from the cable committee there'll be a budget from the school of how much money they need to operate their their channels and then there'll be a recommendation on the franchise fee all right currently the town council has a lawyer who's looking at the contract because there are various <laughs> aspects of it that we want to make sure that we're right on proper before we go into it so people can talk about it now and cut it and yeah. stuff but Let's wait until the whole thing's yeah. done. And I would just like to say, just so that people are aware of how it has worked in the past, and not because we didn't try to make it work differently, the last time we hired a lawyer, it took six years oh, that's before fine. anything was done, OK? Well, My recommendations out? come from community feedback, and I'll just leave it at that. We all get community fe yeah, well, feedback, and that's how we make our decisions, I'm okay. sure. A lot of anger on this board. We used what? To, a lot of anger on this board. Yeah. <laughs> we used to get. Oh my God. We got 75% of the franchise fees to offset the tax rate, and then we decided that we needed to put more money into the cable, so we unanimously approved the article to increase the franchise fees to 40%. And I have no problem going at that point because the remaining 60% that go to offset isn't taxes. That, that's totally yeah, it's different. It's totally different. Totally totally we're not what we're talking about. We're talking Wilson. about franchise no, fees. No, we're talking about the franchise fees that are th that originate at the beginning. It's You're talking amazing, about after it? we get them and how we split them. Mary, Mary Louise. So every three, every three months Mary Louise. we get yeah. They're talking about the actual franchise fee. You are talking about how it was proportioned to go to the yeah, tax. Something totally different. And go, what you're go into the about. fund. Right. That's what you're talking. You're not talking about the franchise fee itself. You're talking about how right. it was proportioned. Right. And that's not what her. Right. So the next time that comes up, I'll okay. remind you <laughs> what you want to talk about is there. So I'll let you know. Oh. Um, so. Moving on to new business. Uh, actually, Mr. Chairman, yeah. could I bring up one subject yeah. under old business? Uh, two years ago, this board uh, directed my office uh, at the time when the Aquarian wells were beginning to have significant levels of PFAS contamination wow. showing up um, to uh, interact with uh, and one well was closed well six was actually closed in august of 2017 yeah. uh, to uh, determine if possible whether or not the contaminants were coming from the coakley landfill mm -hmm. site and um, this board as well as northampton uh, engaged a, a well-respected nationwide hydrologist professor thomas ballestero yeah. to uh, do some uh, review of Coakley landfill records 
to see if there was physical po physical possibility that that contamination was coming from that source. Um, he did so, and we attempted to have input into the so-called technical sessions that um, the Coakley Landfill Group has with the EPA, by which it, decisions are made by EPA as to what to order by way of further investigation. Mm -hmm. Uh, we attempted to uh, become a part of that process and insisted that uh, if, if it could be done, that these technical sessions be open to the public or at least allow uh, uh, independent experts to come in so that it wouldn't just be EPA sitting there with the Coakley Landfill Group making decisions that affect the public. Um, we were turned down at that time, it being brought up that the federal sunshine law uh, has an exclusion for single administrator agencies, of which EPA is one, mm -hmm. as opposed to commission agencies mm -hmm. like the Federal Trade Commission. And so uh, now what happens is the, there is an office of uh, inspector general within the EPA that has determined to invite community input in a listening session about the Coakley Landfill Group this coming Wednesday at the Bethany Church in Greenland from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And their purpose is to hear oral statements to aid in determining whether the EPA has been communicating in a manner that allows impacted communities to avoid exposure to harmful contaminants or substances. Um, with the board's permission, I would like to go and attend that session as I have other EPA sessions uh, to make the point that we, we believe that these technical sessions, which are important pl occasions for decisions being made about what should be monitored and how, uh, that these technical sessions uh, should be made open to the public and to allow expert input. This is a follow-up to the points the board was uh, made, making two years ago. Mm -hmm. I'll move that we let Mark go. Second. Any uh, comments? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. And I summer. wanted to bring up under old business, we have a letter from Ralph Dumpke that was in here over a year ago, and he was assured that something was going to be addressed, and he says that nothing's been addressed. Um, just to have a little background on that, I understand that there are other people now, other neighbors that are involved. There's been a lot of other police contact in the last year at the same address. And this is another case where <coughs> the planning board had approvals for people who were supposed to park on their own property, yep. uh -huh. and they built up uh, walls so that they can't even get on their own driveway. Yep. Yeah. So this is another planning board problem that is addressed <coughs> about parking for people that have these units. So this is the second one here tonight. I'm sure there are many, many more, mm -hmm. but I think Mr. Dunkey deserves the respect that he was told he would be, uh, something would happen. He's mm -hmm. waited a whole year before yeah. he has said anything. And there are other people there. I know of other areas down there where parking is a problem on those numbered streets where people have recently sold their homes mm -hmm. because yep. they just can't, they're afraid of their neighbors in yep. some cases. Yep. And this is not the type of thing that we should condone as a town. We have rules and regulations. This is the par uh, place where there's a problem with people parking in the fire zone. I mean, it doesn't get any more blatant than that. He's having problems with his insurance company. Um, and we need to address this issue. We have all these other issues that people are about parking and, you know, the poor people that just sell, had to sell their house, granted, they made a ton of money when they sold it, but they really wanted to stay there. But they're afraid of all the fighting that goes on with their neighbors. Until the planning board releases jurisdiction. Yes. And that's sends, not Mr. Dunkey. That's no, another I understand. One. That's, that, but this, on this particular case, Mr. Dunkey's case, yeah. until the planning board relinquishes jurisdiction by sending a letter to the Board of Selectmen recommending that you take legal action to solve this problem because the property is in violation of the site plan approval, there's nothing you can do. 
So what do we have to do? Send a letter to the, uh, how, how does Mr. Dumke get the respect that he deserves from somebody <clears throat> when he's waited a year now? Well, right now you're stalemated because the planning board refuses to give that jurisdiction and refuses to make the complaint. Did, did, we, did anybody request it of this planning board? Oh, yes. And, and yeah. they, they in started, writing? Happened. They, started, no. they started negotiating with the owners of the property through their attorney, okay, who is now retired. <laughs> Nothing has happened. So who negotiated, Jason? I, I came through the planning board. I, uh, Mark would probably tell Mark, you, have you been, Were you involved There's in more that? to this story than is being told right now. I'll yeah, tell you that sure right is. now. There's a lot yes. more to this Way story than is to being this story. told. Oh, yeah. And there's they people need, that have died in the last year from what I've been told. They need to have two parking spaces on that property to comply with their requirements under their, under their condominium. Talk to the police department okay. about it. No, I, I realize <laughs> that, but what I'm saying is, did we, were the proper, was the procedure followed to have this done? So Mark, was, can you respond to this please? Uh, it's been a while. Uh, <laughs> all right. I'm not prepared to give you a, okay. a blow by blow to Can, you look, in, can you look into it and get back to us on it, please? Sure. Is yeah, that? That's, that's good. So can you give us a time limit? Mr. Dumke's already waited more than a year. Yeah, I need to get around a certain set of hearings that are coming up. Uh, at, so what uh, in can we tell Mr. Dunn? There are two issues here. Yeah. Yes. Okay. One is the legal issue of what needs to happen on the property to mm -hmm. be in compliance with the site plan yep. and the subdivision and condominium approvals that were granted and given and recorded in the registry of deeds. Right. The other is whether or not you wish to have the police department ticket and tow the cars every time they park there. If it's illegal, it's they're illegal. In parking in a fire zone. Well, then right. do it. It's absolutely ridiculous. I'm down there all the time. I've never seen a car parked in a fire zone. Yeah, I hear you yes. are down there all the time, yep. Regina. We parked in the fire zone is what I've heard. Now, I'm parked in the driveway, well, Bonin's driveway. He can, Dumpke the fire can do whatever zone. he wants, but Dumpke's been it's, here for two years. He's not the one that's complaining, Regina. Please. The problem. Yeah, I know the guy behind yeah. them. That just a violation. Well, obviously they're friends of yours, aren't they? Should be they? ticketed. They yeah, should be well, towed. So okay, I'm not, not allowed a to have friends in my neighborhood. No, but you you need to when you do things for your friends, make sure they're I in the right. I didn't do anything for my friends. Well, then why is nothing oh, happening awesome. here? That's what we need to get to the bottom of, Mark. Oh my yes. God, are you serious? Thank you. These people are getting harassed every day. This footage <laughs> of it. That works both ways. And <laughs> those people, they don't. Where, where is their parking space? We have another. We have this problem here tonight, and we need to get to the bottom of it because there are many other people who have the same issue. I just hope if we're going to enforce it on yes. Second Street, we enforce it on one, That's two, exactly three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, right. twelve, thirteen, You're fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, right, seventeen, Virginia. eighteen. Oh, I didn't know you could count that high. Yeah. Thank you. So there, there are two issues actually. One has to do with the site plan, mm -hmm. right? And the other has to do with the uh, uh, fire lane. Right. and which side of the street it's on. Yeah. And I, I don't know if the, uh, Mr. Dumkey, I understand, would like the fire lane to be switched to the other side of the street. Right. I There's think already, mainly he doesn't want people parking in the fire lane. Well, well uh, I, I, I think already, actually, e even, even though the fire lane is on the opposite side of the street from him, if you take a look at the aerial photograph and where the, where the driveways are on his side of the street, yeah. there is no parking unless you have a half a Volkswagen. Yeah. On Legal his side parking. of the street? <laughs> On his side of the street. Yeah. Well, you have people, half a Volkswagen, you can't park. But people do park there. Uh, if they park there, they, they have a right to park there because it's parking is allowed on that side. Mm -hmm. But to comply with the ordinance, they've got to have about a half a Volkswagen to park there because that's all the legal space there is under the <laughs> ordinance. So what do you mean? What, what's, what do you Joke. There's no parking on either side of the street that can't be because there's no acceptable sized parking space on either side of the street. Well, then that's what we need to do if that's what, what has to happen. You know, the, the people are supposed to have parking for their houses or they go and they rent a space like what's being told to this other lady. Um, we have we had this discussion last year about which side of the street the fire lane was on a, on a number of those Ocean streets Boulevard. down there and then we had it's not Ocean Boulevard well, it was it's, Ocean Boulevard it's and this it's this, the, the, numbered letter, the numbered it's streets the numbered streets is what we have it's not the not the Ocean Boulevard uh, we, we've had that that's that discussion was last year and we took the recommendations of our fire department our police department 
Public mm -hmm. Works, mm -hmm. and we came up with those. So the fire lanes are set on where they are. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the issue is people parking in the fire lanes. Well, then if that's an issue, then the then that should be brought up to the to the police chief and <laughs> and see what he's going to do about correcting that. That is not something we should get into. Now, when you talk about a planning board issue, then I think we, we should ask our planning board representative to bring that to them and ask them where they are at, ask our town attorney where we are at, allow them to come back to us with a solution, and then if the planning board can't do it, then I think we need to take that on well, as a board. We've been in this position for more than a year. I, I know we oh, have. We have I know we have. On it. Oh, yeah. So that's why I'm saying, well, but let's, yeah. let's, you've brought it up, so let's continue on with it. Thank you. And again, a time limit, Mark? Uh, um, I'm, I'm looking to a, a, a breather uh, to do something like this after mid-July. Uh, mid Mid-June, I'm sorry. Mid-June. Yeah. Mid-June. Okay. So I, we will, thank you. Yeah. Mrs. Wolseley. See, I don't have any friends, so anyway. Uh, the, the problem is the planning board from, from the get-go. They approve all this development. Did you just make a thing that They you, approve you all this with. development, and, and you just, it, it creates a terrible problem down there. We're overbuilding. It's causing an awful problem for well, the This is a 20-year-old problem that's been going on. It's been going yep. on since the planning board was sitting there. Well, we have an issue that we're trying to solve. And nobody's Mrs. making Walsley. them do it. Nobody's uh, making them do it. Moving on to new business. Number one is bond release, Cheshire Place, Drakeside Road, $4,002.40. Also, $2 also move that we uh, accept or sign. Second. All those in favor? That would release the bond, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's unanimous. We have number two, acceptance of bond Kenville development for $46,910. I will so move. I'll second. second. All those in favor? Agreed. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, other old new business. Oh, I'm going to go to a uh, seminar with Beth in assessing next week for the ins and outs of exemptions. Hmm. Great. Do we have an announcements or whatever? Uh, yeah. We're going. Uh, thank you. Any other uh, new business? No. Seeing none, we'll have, um, what are they called? Closing comments. Closing comments. <laughs> yeah, somebody got up at, at the public speaking and was speaking about and has made some accusations. And I've, I've looked back at some minutes specifically October 9th, 19, uh, 2014, when there was a motion made by myself, seconded by Selectman Wolseley, and the vote was five to nothing to approve the creation of the position of assistant town manager. So when somebody says that, that it is a fake or a false position, it was a unanimous vote seconded by Mrs. Wolseley. Second of all, going on through that, we. We then talked about the budget, and the and Mrs. Wolseley approved the budget, approved the 2015 personnel administration budget, including the recent personnel changes, and it was a five nothing vote, and that and then it goes on to talk about the assistant town manager and the human resource director to replace previous assistant town council and human resource director, and it's a part time position. It goes on to sp spell it out, and also in here the. Um, the chief wanted to thank the board at the time. Chief Sullivan wanted to thank the board and the town manager for their confidence in him and announced his retirement as police chief. And he's looking forward to the challenge to continue to serve the town and hope to add value. Selectman Wolseley stated, we are going to make you work hard and appreciate your expertise. Selectman Griffin made statements knowing that somebody with his qualifications would be a great thing. And there were other statements in here as well. So. When statements are made that it was a fake position and a yes, phony position, uh, it was a unanimous board decision of that board at that time. Boards change, boards make it changes. And if we have, if, if something new comes up, then we can change that. But to say that it was a fake position when they, when they voted for it, I'm sorry, but I, that just doesn't sit well with me. Um, May I make a statement? Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm, I'm talking to the chair. All right, so I'm, I'm 
voicing this through the chair because I don't want to get into a back and forth with somebody. But when things are said in a meeting, when things, individuals can say whatever they want to. When things are said in meetings, though, that people took illegal actions and that, uh, you know, they did things illegally, then names should be named. When people say people should be removed from a board, then names should be named. If somebody wants to make those statements, they should name the names. They should follow through on what they're saying. Now, you know, there's a lot of anger, a lot of yelling on these boards, and I'm not going to get into that with individuals. But if you say somebody, you accuse somebody of doing something illegally, you make the name and you follow through on what you want to do. But you don't just keep going saying and accusing and making, you know, in implications about people. So I, I, I would like that to stop. It's ridiculous. Okay. Evelyn, Mrs. I was I had, was newly returned to the board for my fourth term in twenty thirteen and fourteen. I did not have a copy of this personnel policy to refer to. And I was serving in twenty fourteen with four individuals who were determined to get that position for their friend, Mr. S former Chief Sullivan. I went along, and I shouldn't have, but I went along with it because I thought I'm outvoted. I'm not gonna bother creating a big uproar, but the bottom line is that this, this personnel policy, which was in effect at that time, and was recently um, approved in March 13, 2014, I didn't, understand all the procedures that had to go you had to go through uh, and the protocols and advertising and all that stuff none of the protocols in this personnel policy were uh, were applied for that position and the next part and this is the first thing I mentioned to Fred when I was reelected last year there was a very serious criminal incident in June 2013 in Hampton, and I was not made aware of it until February 2016 when I had a call from an individual who knew what happened. That problem in 2013 applied to the town of Hampton, applied to the police department, and I was totally blocked off from knowing anything about that because there was no communication. And I stand by what I said tonight, and we are bleeding money on a useless position. There was no competition, no applications, no advertisement, and you didn't, you didn't really replace Wanda uh, in uh, legal. Wanda died, unfortunately, and that money was left over. That doesn't mean that the new position um, <laughs> that the new position of assistant manager was comparable to what the position was in the legal department. The public is furious. People are stopping me in Hannaford, for heaven's sakes, complaining. And I don't blame them. I'm complaining, too. This is a terrible thing for this town. That you signed and um, you were part of. Thank you. I, if I you knew know? what well, was done. Well, you should done, know what you're voting for. My, no, if I knew what had been I, done, I, I think and we I have all, four we, I don't men think this is a, we had your vote, sitting you there, let, you did who vote, signed that. You vote, you voted, you voted. You I voted. knew you were going to do okay. that. Okay, well, thank four you for one. voting. Four to we're one. following your vote. Thank so you, I Mrs. Said, well, Wilsley. It's not worth fighting. Thank with you them. for your vote. My um, comment doesn't have anything to do with what's been said about this stuff, but. I want to say I was approached on my way in tonight by Chairman Griffin because he didn't like a statement I said on social media that said that we weren't going to make rash decisions on trash. The reason why I said that statement I was referring to because I have been talking about having public hearings before we change any policies, mm -hmm. okay, with, but we decided we're going to have a together commission, but with both condos and commercial businesses. And before we had any of those public hearings, which were scheduled, I was presented the trash policy to, to, uh, to change the amount of bins, to blanket them for people. Hmm. That's what I meant when I posted rash decisions or whatever By I said. By former boards of selectmen. That's yeah, what well, it said. Yeah, it's, yeah, I've seen it more than once. And I brought it up 
that this board of select that the board of, that you're on has been, as far as I'm concerned, after 15 years, that is the most you. That is the biggest rash decision I've seen, and you voted for it too. I never said I didn't. Okay, that's exact. Perfect. That's right. But don't accuse other boards when you have had some rash decisions yourself. If you Never don't have all the didn't information, bother putting that down. If you don't have all the Mrs. information Wolfley, you need. Right, what I want, First Amendment. You need information when you're making decisions like that. Well, we all have a chance. You could come and get all the information you wanted, but evidently you didn't. No, I didn't get any okay, information well, thank on you. a You've criminal admitted activity. That, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, this has been described to you. We've met in public, and it's all been described to you. And oh you no, have... no, no. Okay. What triggered this? What triggered the mess that I discussed tonight? M Mr. Chairman, I think we're we're virgin and libel here. Yep. I, well, I would no, be that's extremely she careful. She is the one criminal. that's doing it. I would be extremely careful. Yes, she has. We've talked. We've uh, these matters have all been brought up. And if you want to continue to go on the road that you go, please just continue. Do no, what you want to do, Mrs. Wilson. No paying attention to the You're not agreeing. You're policy. not going along with the decisions that you voted yourself. So because that's enough. Because I didn't know. Well, you did it. No, I didn't. You I mean, didn't I vote? Did, I, yes, I voted. Our records show I, that you voted I, for exactly what you're complaining but about. But I did not understand. Okay, I'm sure you don't. There's a lot of things that I'm policy. sure you don't understand. Thank you. Well, no wonder. Uh, Mr. Mr. Gerald. Mr. Chairman, I'm uh, hoping the board will have the patience, if it could, to uh, resume the uh, non-public session we had earlier under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon 3 Roman 2 small e litigation. So moved. Could, you, could you put I'll personnel in that too, please? Personnel? Okay. Yes, please. Uh, if it's so one what, personnel thing to bring up. Yeah, what time uh, are that would we be doing a this? Also and, move. A and E then. 2125. Excellent. Oh, Lord. And roll, uh, roll Aye. call vote. Aye. Aye. Thank you, Channel 22. Thank you.